Hi there, and welcome to the Creative Endeavor Podcast. This is the podcast bringing you inspiring stories from creative professionals from around the world. And I cannot tell you how good it feels to say that one more time. It has been such a long time between episodes here. I've been receiving emails and comments and messages through either my website or all over social media. Andrew, when are you going to bring back the Creative Endeavor podcast? We miss the Creative Endeavor. We want to hear that podcast again. You know, I I, sometimes I don't really focus on the views or the the listens. And and so you kind of lose sight and, and touch with how many people are actually impacted by this. And whilst it's not a huge following, there's a few people that really love this podcast. So when I heard some of these and read some of these messages, I was was like, I got to bring it back. I can't just stop. I did stop and I apologize. I have no excuse. I guess my only excuse would be 2020 and then 2021. But you know what? 2022 is looking like it could be an interesting year. Now, if you're anything like me, I mean, I kind of, I can get a bit down. I can get a bit negative. Yeah, the world's been rocked by a lot of stuff in the last little while. And it can be distracting, it can be a little scary, but I'm thinking, you know what? I'm going to just change what I'm focusing on, what I'm listening to, what I'm watching. I'm going to change some of the stinking thinking that I've been doing and focus on purpose and creativity and my mission, which is really spending this time with you sharing creativity with you, trying to give you something to think about, trying to give you some solutions to some of the things that we're going to face as creatives going forward. And ultimately, that's what I hope to do here with this podcast. So let's call this the Creative Endeavor 2.0. And let's claim 2022 for a new creative start, a fresh start. This is going to be our year. This is going to be something extraordinary if we choose to make it that. Anyway, That's what I'm choosing to focus on. And I hope you'll join me with a new inspiring journey forward and just kind of leaving that past where it belongs in the past. All right, cool. I'm I'm so pumped to bring you this episode. I couldn't think of a better person to bring back the creative endeavor with than my good friend, one of my best buddies actually, if not my best buddy ever. I just love this guy. This is Samuel Earp. Now, you might have heard of Sam. You're probably following him on YouTube. Uh, you probably, uh, you might be following him on Patreon or social media. He, he posts some great TikTok videos, I got to say, and, and some great little Instagram clips. I've been friends with Sam since about, I think, 2014, 2015 when we met. And he's an extraordinary guy. Now, I'm just going to warn you in advance. Like, I, I, I'm a little bit alternative. I'm a little bit out there. You might not know that about me. I'm, I think things and have some ideas that do go against the grain of the mainstream. I hope that's all right. The aim here with this podcast is to give you a glimpse into the sorts of things that I actually talk to my buddy Sam about. So this is really just a window, a view into a conversation that I would be having anyway. And so we talk a little bit about what's going on with the world. Uh, yeah, I got a bit of a different point of view on what the heck is going on here. Um, I also bring into it a little bit of my spiritual view, as does Sam. And this is one of my favorite things to do is bounce these ideas off Sam. And we just have a genuine exchange. And I find that that's where the growth is, kind of being challenged, thinking about things differently. And Sam's that guy. You know, I don't know if you have a friend like this, if you're blessed like me and you've got a friend like, like this, where somebody can just drop something with you an idea, or it's something that that represents a paradigm shift. Because that's what I'm finding here is that a lot of this stuff is a real paradigm shift. I'm finding that anyway. And I mean, if it's health, I found that that Sam really got me thinking a different way with health. He got me thinking completely differently about money. And and if there's anything that we have hangups about as artists, it's got to be finances, right? Are you like me there? I'm a total flake with it. So Sam gets me to think about things. And and also, he's, a, he's an extraordinarily, you're going to hear in this podcast, he's a positive guy. He's a really positive guy. He doesn't focus on the negative. He focuses on solutions and, and, and 
purpose and his mission and tries to cut those distractions out of his life. So I wanted to bring him on, talk to talk to him about some of this crypto stuff. We even get into a little bit of NFTs. There's there's a kind of an interesting little challenge that we have for each other towards the end of this conversation. And um, yeah, also an opportunity to talk to him about his past, his beginnings, where where he started his creative journey. So this was this was a really fun conversation. And again, when we get into any stuff like cryptocurrency or even what's happening in the world, we really hope, I certainly do, I know Sam feels the same, we really hope we don't offend anybody here. That's not the point. This is just a genuine exchange of ideas, a, a real conversation. And even though some of these views might be different to your own, if you're viewing this or, or, or listening to this, our intention is to just put out some honest content and, and just share with you one of these conversations and hope that you might look into some of this stuff that we're talking about. Because if there's one thing that we know for sure, 2022, like every other year that's coming our way, is going to present some changes. And if there's one thing I've learned, it's that anticipating change is one of the most important things that we can do as a creative. If we just adhere to the same model that has always worked, when something comes through and changes and shifts the bedrock of society and, and the way the economy functions, industries disappear almost overnight. They're gone. I lost my business now twice, and it was a very painful experience trying to rebuild after going through some of these calamities. But ultimately, you do come through stronger if you learn the lesson. And so if there's one lesson that I've learned, it's all about diversification. It's about anticipating change and changing and adapting and diversifying our approach, having many irons in the fire, not just one. So there's a little bit of that talk in here as well. And let me just insert this little bit in here as well. Um, this might get into some financial stuff in this podcast, okay? Sam and I, we're not financial experts. We're not advisors. This is not financial advice. So if you're going to make any financial decisions, probably best don't base it on anything that you've heard here, okay? Do your own thing. Do your own research. Make your own decisions. Come to your own conclusions. But we're just talking about what we're doing personally. And again, this is just giving a little bit of a window into the type of conversation I'd be having with Sam. Uh, personally, I'm doing particular things, but I'm not telling you to do it. And Sam is not telling you either. So make your own decisions, take responsibility for yourself. As far as financial advice goes, hey, we're not in the business of doing that. We're just here having a conversation. Cool. All right. Let's that be said. And uh, we're cool. Excellent. Because the world's a weird place, right? You get that? Yeah. You're not weird. The world's weird. Yeah. Okay, cool. I was super inspired by the end of this conversation. Um, you'll hear that sometimes I, I do get a little bit dark. I do get a little bit negative, but Sam's just got this way of bringing me right back again. And that's why he's just such a good friend of mine. I just, it's extraordinary. I, I really so blessed to have him in my life. Anyway, look, without further ado. Oh, I, oh, before I forget. No, very important. Before I forget, you're listening to the audio version of this podcast. I can't believe I forgot to tell you. You know, there's a video version of this podcast. There is. And you'll find that video version exclusively on my Patreon page. Go to Patreon, search Andrew Tischler, that's T-I-S-C-H-L-E-R, and you will find that on my Patreon page. For just five bucks a month, you'll get the video version of any podcast that I bring out. You'll also get exclusive Q&A videos. You'll get some critique videos in there. See, I'm really into painting, right? You might have noticed. Uh, I also put up extended versions of some of the videos that I share on YouTube. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, there's hours and hours of content that I put out every single month. And the only place you can find it is on Patreon and it only costs five bucks. That is a friggin' deal. I don't even think you can go out to get drive through for that amount of money. But think about the creative nourishment that you'll get off that pay. Okay, I'll stop. I'll stop. Stop. I, see, I'm making myself cringe and I didn't even bring my bucket. Okay, look, without further ado, let's get stuck into this episode of the Creative Endeavor Podcast. It is so good to be back here with you once again. Here's Samuel Earp.
<laughs> Samuel Earp, welcome to the Creative Endeavor podcast. How are you, my friend? Oh, good, thanks. How's it going? <laughs> good, man, good. Hey, it's so good to have your company here on the podcast. The first one back in like... Oh man, I think it's been over a year since I've recorded one of these. I've had so many people going, Andrew, when are you going to bring back another episode of The Creative Endeavor? And I thought, what better way to kick it off again in 2022 than to have Mr. Samuel Earp from the <laughs> north of New Zealand. Uh, yeah, man. <laughs> awesome. Bro, there is so much that I, <laughs> I want to talk to you about and get stuck into here in this podcast. Um, I think the best place to start, though, is if we could just hear about your story and how you ended up becoming a full-time artist. Take us back to the beginning. Take us even back to childhood when you first found out that you just loved art. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, so I literally have been uh, drawing and painting since I was a child. And uh, certainly from a really early age, I was drawing like weird things like the lampposts in our street, for example. <laughs> And um, and then I was drawing things like trains. And um, after that, I was I really started um, just really like admiring the uh, the British landscape, if you see what I mean. So I I, I wanted to um, I started getting into like painting landscapes, you know, watercolor and stuff. And um, yeah, I mean, one of the main reasons. I mean, it's a good thing now, but one of the main reasons that I think I got into uh, art anyway is because, uh, well, for the first few years of my life, I didn't have such a great childhood. I had an alcoholic father who um, was pretty mean and uh, he wouldn't let us play outside. Like I wouldn't, wasn't allowed to go out in the garden. I'd see all my friends playing in the street and we were just locked in the house all the time because my dad was... Uh, drunk and paranoid basically and uh, so I used to just um, uh, sit at home all day drawing basically it was sort of a way of expressing myself and uh, yeah that's where that came from so art has always been my thing since I can remember because it was always an escape and uh, yeah so uh, sadly uh, you know, my my father died when I was really young. I was I was like um, uh, I think I was about nine years old. So he he, he died from alcohol abuse, basically. And um, I'm so sorry, yeah, then, Sam. Wow. No, nah, no. I mean, it's <laughs> you know, it's it's one of those things. I mean, well, you know, there's still positives that came from it, if you see what I mean. Because right, uh, uh, you know, I always wanted to do always into uh, art ever since then it was just always my thing but then as a teenager I was really really noticing the landscape and and uh I did art um in high school so in in um England where I grew up um basically we do these exams when you're 16 and they're called GCSEs and there's a few subjects that you can take so one of them was was uh, art and although they were trying to make me do all sorts of different kind of art, I always, you know, the core thing of what I was doing was was uh, landscapes because that's just what I love doing. And um, and then I did art for A level, which is what you do after your GCSEs if you want to stay on. So you do that sort of between 16 and 18. I think they also call it sixth form as well. And then after that, you'd go to um, university. So I did art for A-level and they were, again, I was just, it was always just landscapes and realism art and that was what I was into. But then they were trying to sort of get me to do all this uh, abstract stuff, which I just could not relate to it at all. Just, just not my thing. But yeah, overall, sort of generally discouraged from doing art anyway, like loads of people going, oh, you can't make a living from it. And mm. you know how the school system is. They just... Um, well, no they, wonder they're painting abstract. Yeah. <laughs> yeah and you know what they're so you know the education system they just like yeah. they're just trying to like indoctrinate you on and teach you to be poor basically and not follow your dreams <laughs> like, so, wow hmm. so <laughs> so anyway after that i um uh when i was about 18 i kind of like shelved the uh the painting and i i stopped for quite a while i i, I did go to university i studied um um plant sciences so because that's another interest i've had since i was uh, from quite a young age is interest in in plants 
still still interested in them and uh yeah what do i do after that yeah so i i did go to um i did go to university and um yeah i didn't really do much art at all i spent a lot of time drinking and partying and stuff <laughs> at uni as you do <laughs> it goes with the territory sometimes yeah yeah i i still did i, I still did all right i uh I, I got higher than a beer drinker's degree anyway <laughs> Oh goodness me, Samuel Earp. <laughs> Just to be clear for those listening, you would not recommend that type of behavior, would you? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good safe, good safe. Yeah, yeah. So, so nah, this so... your your university degree, your studies. So your studies were in plant sciences, and then you came out of that yeah. with a with a degree, and. Um, yeah. So for, for knowing a little bit about your story, obviously, because we've been friends for years now, years and years. And so that, that actually led to some pretty interesting opportunities, work opportunities, didn't it? Yeah. So um, so what happened was I, I um, you see, I didn't really do that well at school. I mean, I, I did not have a good time in high school at all. I was like wow. bullied all the way through school mm. and I, I wasn't particularly motivated either because most of the teachers were just boring the hell out of me basically all, all i was interested in was uh drawing and painting and plants basically at that, uh, at that time of my life and um yeah so i did I, I did actually get into university anyway and and to be fair i i um i i enjoyed it actually and i i did um I had a good time there. I did learn a lot. Gave me more more confidence. I'm I'm sort of a bit iffy with you know universities in this day and age because to be honest, I think you can get yourself a free education on YouTube really, wow. rather than having to pay all that money to go to to uh, university. But I know there's some some things that you do need to go to. But for me at that stage of my life, it was good anyway. Um, I, I did. I did all right in my, uh, for my uh, degree, and I I actually uh, got a grant to do a master's degree, which I which I um, did in in botany, and um, yeah, that was really cool as well. I, I even uh, went to Mexico to uh, do the um, project for my master's degree, so that sort of started off the kind of like whole traveling thing. Wow. So that was really cool. Love Mexico, man. I'd absolutely love to go there again. And um, yeah. Anyway, so I finished. Um, I finished uni, and um, I was like, right, I, I'm going to get a job in in science. And uh, it took me ages to get a job. I mean, I say ages, but it was, it was over six months of me applying for jobs and and uh, not having much luck. It was really frustrating. I was having to do, you know, crappy jobs in call centres as I was. <laughs> Yeah. As I was waiting, anyway. But I got a job at um, at Kew Gardens in London. So wow! The, the the Royal Botanical Gardens in Kew. Right? Look out! But it was it's an absolutely awesome place because it's just the history. Yeah. And yeah. Um, obviously all the the uh, the plants that they've got there. But I worked in the herbarium, which has got like loads of really old uh, plant specimens, some that were were collected, you know, centuries ago. Because wow. it used to be the done thing. It used to be the done thing that you get all these explorers going to far off lands, and then they bring back plant specimens and bring them back to Kew. Wow. And, uh, yeah. So that was that was really good, but I I did not fit in there at all, man. I was definitely um, you know the square peg, if you see what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> and, but I quickly realised within about three months of going there, I was just like, this science career is going nowhere because uh, the, the pay was the pay was terrible i mean i had to get like I, I was doing gardening for people outside and i had to get a job in a pub in winter because i just couldn't afford to live i mean london is hideously expensive yeah and uh yeah it was so i was i, I think at that point i was getting sick of the uh the whole <laughs> being poor but it was at that time at kew gardens they have a lot of botanical artists there as well mm -hmm. and i was looking at their work and, and also some of these really old botanical paintings and they're just absolutely amazing because they're they're proper scientific paintings, so they need to be accurate because people back in the days, um, I think before color photography, they used to identify plants from a lot of these. So that kind of started inspiring me, and I was just like, why don't I start 
painting again and my gran had actually bought me a watercolor set about two years ago two years previous for christmas and um uh yeah i just i started doing botanical paintings and then i was i was down in um i, I was doing a long distance uh relationship with my ex-girlfriend who had met at university and uh I was trying to save money as well, but I, I was going down to Exeter every other weekend. Anyway, we um, I went I went down there and we we went to a, an art gallery and there was some just absolutely beautiful seascape paintings there by a guy called Peter Coslett, who I think is I think he's from Cornwall, and I was just absolutely blown away by his paintings. I mean, I just I'd never sort of seen seascape seascape paintings that, that look that kind of um, you know realistic and engaging and light and atmosphere and i was just like wow and i was just like i want to i want to learn to paint seascapes that's what started that and then um i i uh had some acrylic paints so i started trying to paint them in acrylics and i'm and the problem i found with the acrylics was that they just dried way too quickly and uh i just wasn't getting the you know the effects i want and then i was i was, I was in an I was in an art store in in uh, Richmond, which is in West London, and I was just chatting to the lady in the art store, and I just said, "Oh, you know, I'm trying to learn to paint seascapes, and I'm just having real, real difficulty with acrylics." And she said, "Have you um, tried water mixable oils at all?" And I was like, "No, I've never heard of them." So I bought some water mixable oils, and I was just like, "Wow, these are these are great." Can you so just was- give me one second, bro, to just go and grab a bucket? Hang on. Sorry. <laughs> yeah go on carry on carry on yeah anyway so um what a snob it, yeah yeah no so <laughs> no but th- th- for me it was great because i i i think like a lot of people because i notice it a lot uh you know through my own um you know youtube channel that there's a lot of people that are quite afraid to try oils and mm. i was the same and then yeah, when i actually right. when i actually use them and my introduction was water mixable oils. I was just like, wow, these are easier than acrylics, in my opinion. Wow. And and uh, and and just the uh, you know the colours are so much more vibrant, and you know you've got plenty of time to blend the colours. You don't have to worry about it, you know, mm-hmm. drying in twenty minutes or. And uh, yeah, so I was trying to learn how to paint the sea. I, I was uh, just absolutely inspired. And at the same time, whilst working at Q, um, as I say, I realised that this science career was going to go nowhere for me. And I was just like, right, well, I still want to work in, you know, using, you know, working with plants and things. So I was looking at options in like horticulture or arboriculture, which is tree work. Right. And don't ask me how. I was on this website that it was a British website, but this American tree company was advertising for arborists and training. <laughs> and uh, one of the requirements was if you've got background in arboriculture or even plant sciences. And I was like, well, I've got a plant sciences degree. So I emailed them. Uh, I told them straight out, I said, I've got no experience whatsoever. I've got a plant biology background. I'm really keen. Um, and they called me up, gave me an interview over the phone and then gave me the job. And I was like, wow. And uh, <laughs> also just broken up with my girlfriend by that point. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so a few months later, I headed over to the to uh, the USA. They sorted out my visa and everything. So I didn't didn't know what I was getting myself in for. Uh, I um, I was living in a place called New Rochelle, which is just outside of uh, New York City. Mm-hmm. It's in Westchester County, and um, yeah, so I was working for this tree company. I had absolutely no experience at all, and it was just like thrown in the deep end. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yeah, wow. man. It's still to this day like the hardest work I've ever done. <laughs> yeah. Wow, man. Yeah. That's, that's, that's real... It's fascinating though how like you know the the life story. Um, it, it's it's interesting. You know, the more people that I talk to, you know, their life story from one event to another, from one chance meeting to another. It's weird yeah. how it keeps bringing you back again, but. You know, what I've noticed um, about you, and, and again, w- with your story, it's like you keep coming back around to meet that thing that you're passionate about. It's always interfacing with the landscape in some way. Yeah. It keeps it keeps coming up. Yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so um, I, obviously when I went to the USA, I, I wasn't painting at all because I was 
for the most part working six days a week especially when um in the spring and summer because that's when most of the work was i mean it was you know a lot of the work we were doing were for uh lots of different areas in westchester people with a lot of money and big estates and a lot of work basically but yeah i mean it was it was a good experience but <laughs> as i say a lot of work and um um I I got my um, I, I went back to the UK so my my visa ran out and I did a I did a tree surgery course to get my chainsaw and climbing tickets and all that and um, I briefly went back to the USA uh, to work for the company but I was I was a bit worried about the um, you know one of the guys that worked there had a really really seriously bad accident and I was always like worried about the health and safety standards there. like i mean he it, uh, accident so bad his life was ruined basically oh, like he wow yeah, yeah yeah he got paralyzed so it just did, did not sit well with me at all and uh yeah i decided to go back to uh the uk and uh work for a tree company there so i went back to london i got i got a job within a few days of being back and yeah i got a job as a climber and uh I worked for a couple of tree companies whilst I was in London and I was there for just over a year and I was just was not really enjoying being back in England to be honest and uh, I was sick of London by that point and um, I wanted to I wanted to just go overseas again but it was just like the money I, I didn't have a whole lot of money so the thing with Australia and New Zealand was you could get a working holiday visa and uh, I decided to go to New Zealand because I knew there was jobs for arborists there and not long before I went um I was kind of I was just fed up anyway I think it was my cousin just said why didn't you start painting again and I was like yeah I should do that I should start painting again so um yeah I went out and bought a load of paints I, I thought right I'm going to resume trying to learn how to paint the sea again I bought a, I bought a uh, book I can't even remember it was by now actually it's by a seascape artist and I was actually just uh copying the demonstrations in the back i was just like i need to you know get back up to speed and that's another thing actually there's nothing wrong with copying other people's paintings when you're learning in my opinion like, mm. if you're learning i see absolutely nothing wrong with with doing that because that sure. that's what i've done past it mm. so um anyway the uh 2008 financial uh collapse happened and um everyone's losing my their jobs and even our our boss at work was because we had council work was saying, um, yeah, whatever you do, don't do any more than like 450 quid worth of work a day. Otherwise, we're going to rinse through the work and then you're going to be out of a job. So uh, it was looking like I could lose my job within a couple of months anyway. There was, uh, I could still get a working holiday visa to go to New Zealand. I'd had there were jobs for Arbor, so I just made the made the call and five weeks later, I was in New Zealand. <laughs> wow, man. Awesome. Yeah, and then I, I got... A, I got a job with a tree company um, within a week of being in New Zealand. So I was back on my feet again. And mm. then a week later, I went to the art shop, bought a load of art materials and started carrying on <laughs> learning to paint the sea. So I was, I was working and then in, in my spare time was painting. And then uh, six months later, I moved down to Queenstown. That's a really inspiring place. You know, mountains, obviously Amazing. you used to live near there. So, so yeah. Yeah, you, you know that whole area. And then, um, yeah, I was still painting whilst I, I was there. And then uh, I moved up to Wellington because at the time, uh, I wasn't sure what I was to do. I didn't really want to go back to England. I didn't have any money to get back anyway, so I had to like frantically find a job with, with someone that could sponsor me for a work permit. So I got offered a job in Wellington, moved up there. And, um, and this time, uh, when I was in Wellington, I... Um, I I uh, rented a, an art studio space. I was like, you know, I really want to do this more. And the cool thing about Wellington is the the coast there is beautiful. Loads of inspiration for painting. Oh, stunning, and stunning. Ofido yeah. Bay, my favorite. Breaker Bay is yeah, beautiful. Absolutely. Oh yeah, man, yeah. yeah. Bay, Island Bay, all all, all oh. around there. Just great yeah. subjects for uh, hmm. painting seascapes. And um, yeah, I was just really, you know, taking it a lot more seriously. And then. Um, and then probably about a year later, I approached a gallery in, in Wellington, which I'm, which uh, I still sell through now. It's still, it's probably, it's it's the only real main gallery in uh, in New Zealand, bar a, a couple of other smaller ones. 
but that's my main gallery. It's it's called the uh, the Kiwi Art House in Wellington. It's at the top of Cuba Street. If there's anyone in New Zealand that lives in Wellington that's listening to this, so uh, yeah. Anyway, he he um, he gave me the opportunity to uh, exhibit my work and I sold my first painting there about a couple of months later which is really cool so that's, that's why I was taking it more seriously but I was, I was still in that mindset of like oh you know I've got to you know do the career job kind of thing and you know I'd been working on the I've been working on the tools for quite a few years by that point and I was, I was like uh, you know I can't be climbing trees forever and um, a lot of people get out of it and do other things and some people go into arboriculture consultancy and stuff and I ended up getting off, uh, offered a job up in Auckland, so I moved up to Auckland working for a tree consultancy company. So it wasn't uh, wasn't any tree climbing anymore. But I didn't realise how office based it was and how corporate it was. And you know, I was there for about four years. Uh, I, I was really taking my art much more seriously. But I just it, it's it's like I spent a few years trying to be normal, if you see what I mean, and do the career job, and you know, <laughs> I cut my hair and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was just I tried to fit in and be normal. And it you normie. Was it wasn't working for me? And then I, I think by <laughs> I think yeah. by 2014, I was just like I was, I was pretty unhappy actually, and and uh, I was just you know, where's this all going? Yeah, man. And then um, I, was, I was starting to question a lot of things. I read this book by uh, Eckhart Tolle called A New Earth, which just sort of blew my mind open about, you know, things in the nature of our reality. And then and also it coincided with this documentary that popped up called The Hidden Secrets of Money, The, the Biggest Scam in History. And it, in half an hour, ex explained <sighs> quite yeah. succinctly how the... Uh, the uh, global banking system and the Federal Reserve works. And I was just like, that is the first thing I've ever watched about money that actually makes any sense to me. <laughs> okay, we're gonna, we're, we're gonna get into it. We're gonna get into yeah, it. Was yeah. that the Mike Maloney video? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so anyway, we'll get into that. That's, that's okay, yeah. phenomenal. So anyway, that's, yeah, awesome. After watching that documentary, mm. I was just like, and I, I started looking more into it and I was just like, hmm, I'm not gonna go anywhere by working for this company in Auckland and uh working for somebody else it's just gonna it's you know i'm just gonna be chasing my tail so i figured right well if i'm gonna be poor i'd rather be painting <laughs> wow and, yeah yeah and at that same time i was reaching out to other artists um to see if they could help me because um i've obviously i haven't really you know i've never been to art school i mean i, I know i know i did um you know gcses and a levels at school but i don't really sort of count that if you see what i mean i, know, I mean it's like i never went to you know, university to study art, if you see what I mean. So I've self-taught pretty much and mm. books and obviously, you know, like your, people like yourself and stuff have helped me. And uh, yeah, but at that point, I, I, I'd, I'd uh, absolutely plateaued with my painting. I knew I needed help. The things were not working. And I reached out to a load of artists that I like, uh, most of whom wouldn't help me. And then... I saw your work. Or I think I originally saw your work on Pinterest, and I obviously reached yeah, out yeah. to you. And mm. and uh, <laughs> you're not only my favourite modern day painter, but you helped me as well. So oh, checks it was actually, the mail. <laughs> you were actually really instrumental in changing my total, uh, complete mindset. Because when we spoke, yeah. when when we spoke on on Skype, I think I think it was early uh. Uh, 2015. I think mm. by that point, mm. Mm. and and uh, you offered me the job of helping you with the art tours and yeah in, oh that's right yeah yeah far out man and that just set a whole mindset yeah. and i was just like i'm gonna focus on my art career that's that's what i want to do i don't want to yeah it's coming back to me now actually yeah i i i remember that i've got to tell you sam like i remember that time so fondly and i remember i was i was actually visiting my father uh, in far north yeah. Queens, Queensland, in Australia, yeah. and and you and I had a Skype call, and um, I remember my dad like chiming in the conversation with a couple of quips here and there about his time with uh, with oh, yeah. uh, art galleries. I won't repeat it here <laughs> for the podcast uh, <laughs> because it's it's really grotesquely inappropriate. But 
<laughs> well, yeah, my dad's got a way of putting things. Um, but I, I remember that. And, and after putting down the phone, you know, and, and after the call finished between us, I, I was just, I remember thinking, man, what a cool guy. Like instant connection. And, and I consider yeah. you like amongst you know, my closest of friends and, and, yeah, you know, I can, I can talk to you about anything and, and you are, you're my brother, you're my brother. And I, and I, you know, I, I've told you this off air and stuff, but <laughs> oh, there's, there's a real, much, yeah. there's a real, um, I don't know, man, there's a, there's a connection there. And, and I have to say, you know, it, when you give me your story in the past and your history, it's, it's amazing how many of these things, you know, from your childhood, from being bullied at school and, and really essentially yeah. bullied at home too, how it shaped you. And I, I'm starting to see this thing and I, I kind of, maybe it was me reflecting on this because the one thing that when I was wiped out by the global financial crisis, mind you, it wasn't in 2008 when it first struck, but it was, it was years later when the fallout really yeah. hit. Um, I was thinking, my goodness, I, 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 I have got to anticipate what's coming. I've got to anticipate yeah. change. But I tell you one way that I anticipate change. I talk to you. Because you're the guy that has always <laughs> has always actually said, "Hey, look out for this. Check this out. Oh, here's something interesting." And the amount of paradigm shifts I've had in my recent years, do you know that the vast majority of them have come from talking to you? Like, okay, <laughs> and, 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 and I'm serious here. Like, think about the health stuff. Yeah. The first person that ever told me about John Rose and Dr. Robert Morris. And by the way, this is not health advice. This is not financial advice. This is nothing. This is just me and Sam having a conversation here. But, you know, um, and, and some of these philosophies and ideas might seem really fantastic, weird, wacky, and wonderful, and, and maybe really out there, uh, way out in the outfield. But I... There, there was there, there was a need for a shift in my life physically in terms of health and and these answers came like right at the right time. And, yeah. um, you know, that I found yeah, that. I found, I found some of those people, uh, by accident. I mean, like, mm. uh, Robert, Dr. Robert Morse, who's mm. a, a naturopath and, and is all about detoxification and stuff. I found through a cryptocurrency channel. Oh, by amazing. Accident. Yeah. Well, that was no accident. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Isn't that interesting? I, I'm starting to think that, that there are absolutely no accidents to this at all. I was never a everything happens for a reason guy, but, you know, being a Christian now, I kind of, I, I, I'm starting to feel I, I, and get a bit of a sense. And this is just what I choose to believe. Um, but I, I, I feel that there's a bit of a path, a bit of a plan here. In a, yeah, in a way, yeah. and that there very much is a a reason and a design to things. And let's say you, that wasn't your particular worldview. You can certainly use anything that happens to your advantage. You can treat everything like an opportunity. Can't oh, hundred percent. Yeah. In fact, actually, the more I um, uh, the more I sort of delve, especially into my own art business, because I'm I'm trying to sort of learn about uh, you know business skills and and money and finance and entrepreneurship and I'm, I'm trying to break uh this programming that i've had since birth if you see what i mean you know yeah. this whole they because they get you in a poor mindset and it's just i'm still trying to you know break that kind of programming if you if you see what i mean into one of a you know abundance and difficult to explain okay. if you see what I mean. let's let's just put a I bookmark I can't remember now. <laughs> no, no yeah let, let's just put a bookmark there because again i want to talk about this and, and i really wanted to talk to you about cryptocurrency nfts finance raising our yeah. financial iq in in 2022 um leaping forward into this year with a newfound um, passion for our creative pursuits and actually doing something where we we hold ourselves to a higher standard and take responsibility yeah, yeah, here. Yeah. And, and and this is why it's just perfect to be talking to you about this type of stuff because I find that when I talk to you, when we have these conversations, and we talk maybe, you know, a, a couple of times a week or so, but yeah. I, it, for me, it's, it's almost like a reset in a way. It's like checking yeah. back in. I find that also, uh, just on a side note, that with everything that's going on in today's world, and we've got our own particular views about what's going on, and, and not to get bogged down in that, but there is a lot of fear and I find myself getting into fear. And I find that one of the, 
one of the ways I get back out of that fear is talking to you. <laughs> I actually, because you're the you're the like, hey man, listen, come on, it's all it's all good. Focus on this. Look here, all that sort of stuff. Like I, I do find that even though you know, uh, you know, Second Timothy one seven, for for the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Yeah, I know it. I know that that's yeah. what the Word of God says. But ha- however, like. I'm not following that. Like, like not, not all the time. I find myself slipping, you know, I, it's a narrow path. I'm trying to walk, but I do slip off that yeah. path now and again. And I find that, you know, by talking to you, it's like, hang on a second. Okay. Maybe I just need to stop focusing on that and focus somewhere else. So yeah. I want to, I want to get into all of this stuff before we get really stuck into that and into the meat of this podcast, right? I'm so excited. Yeah. Before we get stuck into that, I, I want to just hear more. So, so you, you've, you've had this real interesting path that has led you up to this point now. And so now here you are, you're in your studio in the far north of New Zealand, a beautiful spot, like as far as world-class scenery goes, it's amazing, gorgeous weather. And now you're painting, you're painting on plein air, you're painting full time, you're supporting yourself as an artist. I, I, I want to know, like, what are you, what are you working on now? What are you really excited about right now? What are some of the directions that you're going in with your art career? Um, well, I'm, just, I'm still, I'm still carrying on, um, just doing what I was doing already in terms of, I mean, landscapes and seascapes. That, that's my two main things. I, I'm, I'm, I also want to get into, uh, you know, other things as well. You know, like painting animals, buildings, portraits, that kind of stuff. And um, I how do you how would you explain it? I, I guess the the direction I've I've gone in, I, I even when I met you, I knew um, I ultimately wanted to create a YouTube channel and teach people to paint and share my skills. And basically, because if if we just sort of dial back to when uh, you know I I was talking to you when I was completely stuck, and then. Mm. Um, uh, I went over to uh, visit you in Melbourne when you were living there for for two weeks, and what mm. you did was you um, you just explained a few things to me very simply about you know colours, values, compositions, and just show me uh, a new way of doing things, or just you know your system basically, which made a lot of sense, and uh, I was able to just run with that information you gave me if you see what i mean like my painting just jumped up a load of levels from that that two weeks i spent with you so that kind of time was was uh yeah working on my craft and not and obviously when i moved down to queenstown i was i was i was painting as much as i could and just picking up work as and when i need it so i got you know i got some like uh you know a couple of short-term contracts with you know a couple of tree companies and and uh you know i've worked in a shop for a couple of days a week like I, as far as i'm concerned i didn't care what i did in terms of work it's because for me it's just like just to get extra money but my sole purpose was uh working on my art career and then mm. you know i started my youtube channel four years ago and you know in hindsight i you know i wanted i probably could have done with like waiting another couple of years but at the same time, man, just I, I think you should just start where you stand. You, exactly, you know, I, just start. I think you just wonder, even if you, you know, even if you're an artist and and uh, you're really just learning. I, I don't see any harm just starting a YouTube channel and just going here, follow my art journey, and you could, you know, pe- people find that stuff interesting. I think. Yeah. And, uh, oh, for sure, yeah. man. Yeah, for yeah, sure. So- yeah, there's so many people that are. Uh, sorry, I'll just I, I just want to insert yeah, yeah. this. If the, there's so many people that are that are waiting to be ready, I've even talked yeah. uh, I, even on this podcast to to some people that are like, I'm like, why aren't you on YouTube? Why aren't you sharing what you know? Oh, I'm not ready. I don't have this. I don't have that. I'm like, you yeah. just start with what you've got. It's like I'm yeah, talking exactly. to you, are now you've got a laptop, right? Okay, I've seen you on Instagram. You got a phone. Film on that. Yeah. Like, do, just yeah, exactly. do it. Yeah. Just do it. Like. I I got my first bit of um, kind of I, I was I was doing a search on how to make YouTube videos and I found my the 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 one that was really don't ask me how I found it I'll tell you how I found it <laughs> I, I I did a I did a little YouTube search on how to make a YouTube video and the first thing that came up was a a girl who was doing lookbooks and makeup videos. 
And yeah. she said, I use a Canon 700D. I like this camera because I can take the screen, reverse it, lift it out so I can see myself on the camera and I can frame it and all yeah. that. And I was like, cool, good enough for me. I bought one. I thought this is a great little camera. I bought another one. And then I just started adding to the gear, but I started with one. That's it. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. You just uh, start with what you got. And then, mm. well, wasn't it in, um, in Napoleon Hill's book think and grow rich where he just said start where you stand use the tools you got and better tools will be found along the way i'm sure it's him that said that it rings a bell uh, i've heard a lot of people say that as well though like i mean from tony robbins to brendan bouchard yeah. to to a lot of people i mean and you know Di martini as well just just using the resources that are around you um it's this feeling of of scarcity and lack it's like i don't have the resources or i i'm not ready yet yeah. within myself it's like look and 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 i actually was really inspired by by dr john Martini's story when i back in the day when i was into all the new agey type stuff <laughs> I, I'm so not anymore, but I mean, it served a purpose for a time, I suppose. But I was I was listening to some of his stories, and one of them was he was taking uh, college classes, and he was turning around and teaching what he was learning in college, and and that was a way for him to accelerate that information. And then again, separately, you know, since I'm name dropping here for uh, for new age teachers, I think it was, and and again, it's it's an old saying, but. Um, uh, Bob Proctor was saying, uh, you don't understand something until you can explain it to somebody else so that they may understand. And, yeah. and you know, it, it's like Martini was taking that to a new level. Here he was accelerating his understanding by turning around and explaining it to somebody else. You know, it, it, it caused him to step up and own that information. Yeah. Um, so if you know a little something about something, teach it, see where it takes you. Um, yeah. the, the opportunities that's, that's, are there, man. There's the, and, and the internet's a big place. I don't think people oh, realize yeah. it's like, oh no, it's already saturated. Rubbish. No, yeah, get in, yeah, do it. Yeah. 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 No, I mean, well, that's part. Of, that's part of the reason also my YouTube channel because um, it's it, it actually helps me learn <laughs> when I try and teach it to other people. So, Absolutely, man. So yeah, my yeah. my unit my YouTube channel. It benefits me as well. <laughs> mm. Oh, that's awesome, man. Uh, it's um, it, it's quite interesting, isn't it? Like this, this art education has opened up. You know, I, I originally went into the teach teaching because it was a necessity at the time. My my career had taken a bit of a nosedive after um, the financial collapse. I was taking a period of years that I, I was trying to rediscover who I was, what my artistic voice was. Yeah. It was a very bizarre situation to be in because I'd, I'd achieved quite a level of success within a very small niche and I had painted myself into a corner so to speak yeah. in that I had this you know big bold expensive work that would not sell and yeah. here I am with paintings like in excess of you know ten thousand dollars just lying around I can't drop the price because the market would just have eviscerated me. And I was always taught yeah. from the beginning, don't do that. And I'm like, what have I got to do? I said, I'll go into teaching. I have to teach now. I yeah. loathed the idea. I never would do that. I, and I, I was, I always had this really bad idea. You were talking before about programming, right? I had this yeah. terrible idea in my mind that those that can't teach, I'm like, man, that is such, and, and so I, I, st I went into it thinking, oh, I'm such a hypocrite. And I started teaching, but then I realized I love it, dude. I yeah. love actually just sharing it with because it's like that that moment that you were describing before of explaining to you just a couple of fundamentals. Nothing gives me more joy than yeah. giving somebody say, "This is what happens when you check out what happens when you mix that quinacridone magenta with your cadmium lemon, right? Right? Yeah. What what kind of red do you get there? Isn't that cool? Isn't that cool? And yeah, you yeah, see yeah. you see oh, them yeah, just yeah. go bing and the light bulb goes off and it's like wow and i said okay look look you see where the tree is in the composition yeah dead center okay fantastic now if you shift your mountain over to the right and that tree over to the left what happens ah balance asymmetrical balance see that and they yeah, say and yeah. by the way here's where it shows up in the old masters it's not mine i i have no yeah. ownership of it and i i feel you know when you will i'll shut up in a second uh but i i feel when you're when you're when you've got this information it's a bit like money in a way it's a bit and yeah. it's, it's interesting they call it currency 
because it's like oh, a yeah. current of the sea, yeah. right? If there's a flow to it. Information's the same way. If you try and yeah. hold on to that and say, no, these are my secrets, mm. yeah. and, and, and you, you hold on to it, you break that flow, you know? Yeah. Uh, um, and, and so I, I found very quickly that um, by passing off what I, uh, passing on what I, what I, felt I had I known or, or gained some knowledge in that area by passing it on, I suddenly got more knowledge and it, and it was reinforcing yeah, yeah. that stuff. It's so interesting, yeah. man. Yeah, it's a, it's a shame that the, I, I mean, as I say, like when, when it was 2014, I was reaching out for help that there were, you know, there's a lot of people that just, a lot of artists that just didn't want to help. It's like, it's like they were saying, they're like sort of closely guarding their secrets. And it's just, yeah. It's, it's, it's kind of I think that's a sort of ridiculous way of thinking it because even if you share everything you know which I think you should anyway like whoever's trying to whoever p takes on that information if you see what I mean right I mean their painting style is going to be completely different anyway it's it's not yeah. it's really not going to matter at all <laughs> no, no I also don't think it's the right attitude either but yeah <laughs> It's it. I've I've been around all sorts, but there were there were a couple of characters. I'll mention one guy. It was it was a dear man. It, sadly, no longer with us. But his name was Michael Challen, and he yeah. he was a pretty big name in WA there for a period of years, probably around twenty thirty years. He had built quite a career for himself, and then towards the end of his career, he was uh, extraordinary. He died way before his time but extraordinary painter and, and stupendous prices. And I remember looking at him like it's still like one of the exhibitions that I, that I saw, um, he had an exhibition in the lobby of a building called, it was the Woodside building, Woodside oil and gas on St. George's terrace in Perth in Western Australia. And I remember in my university days or shortly after just, just walking into that exhibition and I caught it on an off day. There was a photographer in there documenting the work. No one else was around. And I could really take my time with the paintings. And I remember walking into that space going, I want to do this for the rest of my life. This is the best show I have ever yeah. seen. And when I got a chance to meet him in person, the first thing he did, it was, it was funny. He was, a bit, he was a bit hocus pocus, but a sweet guy. He grabbed my palm and he was like looking at it going, oh yeah, no, you've got a strong creative journey in your life. You know, and I was like, oh, okay, this guy's a bit interesting. Sweet guy. But then he, then he said to me, he said, oh, let's have a look at your paintings. And I, cause I had actually had some paintings showing in the gallery where he was showing, yeah. right? And he looked at my paintings and going, oh no, very accomplished, you know, for, for your age. No, this is great. And I, was, I was a young dude then. And um, then he said, look, your palette's really muted. Why don't you try this? And it was the first time that I heard about the phthalo green Van Dyke brown and permanent magenta. I've adapted that now to, yeah. you know, the burnt umber deep quinacridone magenta and either phthalo green or phthalo turquoise. But that combination uh, to make your rich black and then you can push it in multiple directions. Yeah, now yeah. suddenly I had dimension within the shadows and here's this guy giving me one of his secrets. And I was like, thank you. What? You, what? <laughs> how much do I have to pay you for this? Like what? It's like, no, you just it's, it's, here. Let me, let me help you. I'm like, wow. <laughs> it was incredible. I, I was just thinking, dialing back to the, <laughs> I've just realized we, we went uh, a, a bit off track actually with your original question about what I'm working on at the moment. <laughs> uh, welcome to the podcast. This is uh this is a series of dirt roads into the middle yeah, of we nowhere. Got, got off on tangents a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, um, uh, at the moment, I'm working on a, um, a series of seascape paintings. I, I've actually, your work inspires me again. <laughs> and um, that's fine. Yeah, I love I'm, it. I'm creating a load of um, seascape paintings at the moment. But yeah, I'm just sort of, um, I'm really just continued just chipping away at my, you know, my business, getting more content out, getting more videos up there. Mm. I want to write some, um, you know, books on painting at some point. Awesome. <laughs> it's just. It's having the, there's like so many things I want to do. Uh, yeah, and it's just like, there's not enough hours in the day at all. Right. Right. As well, but, and, uh, it, it, you know, it, I'm mm. a father as well, if you see what I mean. So, mm. uh, you know, uh, having the family, obviously that takes up quite a bit of time as well. And mm. absolutely awesome though. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. I, I'm so, I am so happy to now be in the dad club. 
Uh, for for people that are listening to this for the first time in a long time. um, Yep. So my son was born about three months ago. And I remember you telling me uh, when when Rachel, my darling, was was pregnant, you're like, get ready, get ready, get as much. I remember you saying, dude, get as much done right now as you can, because life is not going to be the same. And then the last warning I got from you was like, okay, when they start crawling and walking, keep a really close eye on them. <laughs> yeah, man. yeah well, I, I'm actually in the same kind of um, boat at the moment because we've got yeah. another one on the way, so which yeah. I think is due in about two months, so it'll be our, our second child. But wow, but <laughs> amazing! My, my um, my son, he's he's three and a half years old at the moment. So, <laughs> oh, he's, and he's such he's a awesome gorgeous, though, <laughs> he, uh, the, the, he's such a gorgeous little blondie, Theodore. Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's a real cutie. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, this is this is incredible. You know, so so with with life kind of stepping up and, and of course you've got to make that dad time, that husband oh, time. 100%. And 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 that, to me that that's my priority. And but I, I'm starting to think about this now because having moved now to a new location, uh thinking about my career and, and what what I can do with with the year and the opportunity that I'm presented with now. I'm thinking more yeah. and more, it's like, I've got to find a new way of structuring my time. You know, how do I, yeah. how do I get this? How do I get it done this year? Cause now I've, I've just added more into my plate. Um, yeah. It's even yeah, causing me it's... to look at my health again and go, I, I don't have the energy I need. How can I change my habits here to have more energy? <laughs> well, eat a lot of fruit for one yeah. <laughs> in the morning. That always gives you loads of energy. <laughs> mm. Um, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. I mean, I I try and plan my days as best I can, but then quite often they don't go according to plan. And certainly when you have kids, I, I'm frequently in situations where I have to like drop everything. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but no, it's all good. And uh, yeah, a lot of the time um, as well, you know, when I've got errands to run, it's I, I can just bring my son with me anyway. He's always coming out on little adventures with me, even even when I'm. You know, going out and getting reference photos and stuff of paintings, and it's cool. Oh, it's <laughs> awesome. It. It's awesome. Oh, I can't wait for the day where Hugo is going to be able to uh, to join me on a few plane air trips and things like that. Yeah, oh, yeah. it's going to be cool. Lucky us, hey? Yeah, yeah, well, that's a, yeah, man. Being a dad's the best. So, <laughs> so you know, looking at um, th- there's a lot going on today, Sam. Yeah, and I I want to ask you and and kind of drill down into this a little bit because again you know as much as I say look I I try to anticipate change within my business because there are some unforeseen events that can happen in the world things that are outside of our control and it can cause a real shift in the way that things work and when something's working and something is you've got a system in place you know that that's a very delicate precarious situation to be in and we've seen phenomenal profound changes in the world in recent years yeah. so not to mention the last two years right yeah. okay um but we're, we're i feel like we're about to go through another shift and this is one of the things i love talking to you about just when we're not recording a podcast and we're not you know just just on the phone and stuff i, I i'm quite concerned I'll, I'll 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 see if i can put it to you this way i'm really concerned i want to know what are those changes that are coming down the pike for 2022, you know, even 2023, if, yeah. if, if we make it that far, <laughs> you know, I'll take positive yeah. Andrew. No, but, but what are these changes that are coming down the pike and what can we do as artists, as creatives to kind of anticipate those changes and how can we, Oh, I love this word diversify yeah, uh, and, and go into some new territories. What are some of the well, things that are on your radar and you're thinking about? Well, I think first of all, we, the important thing is we, we need to keep creating and not keep getting distracted by the lo- noise. If you see, because I mean, look, the last couple of years has has been uh, awful for a lot of people. We were lucky because we knew it was coming. We've known for years, really, as in because we've talked about that kind of stuff. So yeah. we were able to position ourselves a bit better, but it's still yeah. pretty unpleasant. Some of it. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, you know, unlike you, I've had times where I've gotten, 
you know pretty depressed about what's going on even mm. even though i knew i knew it was coming if you see what i mean and yeah yeah and it's just like wow it's here <laughs> yeah and um, and before but i i just want to qualify that by the way because i can imagine that that would be quite confronting for some people listening to it going what do you mean you know it was coming uh, i want to just insert one thing into the conversation yeah. just just if i may sam um because i do understand that that might rub some people the wrong way uh first of all just understand um that there are going to be people out there that are going to think differently <laughs> and kind of yeah. be be on a completely different track that's okay we don't all have to think the same yeah, but yeah. I will say, like, from the point of view that we're in now, in terms of anticipating change, there is a there is a change coming that I'm seeing. I'll, I'll just let you know this, Sam, or, and, and then, you know, I'd, I'd love to hear what you think about this. But just putting in my two cents worth, because I, I can imagine, and maybe I'm just being hypersensitive, but I can imagine somebody going, oh, right now, there is a plan in place to regardless of how you feel about the situation, take advantage of the situation that the world is mm. facing and completely yeah. reshape the world into a new digital financial system, moving yeah. away from the financial system the way it is right now, almost as if it's a controlled demolition. You have yeah. to wonder, is that the intent? I, I kind of lean towards that. I don't know. But what we do no, is that the people that appear to be running the world have said this is going to happen so how yeah. how how can we go okay if they've said it's going to happen and they have and it's documented and it's out there you just have to look if they said it's going to happen and they've got a pretty good track record of saying things are going to happen and then they happen it's just they they yeah. drop out there into the space and no they one always, picks up on it. They always tell you what they're yeah. going to do. They always tell you what they're going to do, man. <laughs> um, and, and and I'll just put it this way so we don't get flagged by the YouTube AI overlords. Um, there is a particular reset that will be great, okay, according to them. <laughs> All right. Do you reckon I did it? And it's yeah, run yeah. by a guy who closely resembles Dr. Evil. The only thing this guy is missing is Mr. Bigglesworth. Mr. Bigglesworth. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So I, oh, yeah. I think maybe. Okay. So, so if you want to pick it up from there, brother. <laughs> oh, man. Where do we? Well, look, put it this way. Um, as I say, it's. Uh, I, I feel very blessed and very fortunate that I was able to anticipate what's happened in the last couple of years and, you know, even even moving to um, far north New Zealand. Apart from anything else, I just wanted to live in a warm climate mm. anyway. Mm. And, you know, winter's not as cold up here as well. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'd even happily live in the tropics, to be honest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just mm -hmm. like being out in the sun in the warm weather. Yeah. But, um, yeah, look, I... I um, it, it is easy to get sort of depressed about it and stuff, but then I've had to like snap myself out of it and just start focusing it on, on uh, my work, my art, mm -hmm. my family, if you see what I mean. Yeah. And getting into that creativity and focusing on, on yourself because really with, with everything that's going on right now, it's, 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 I think it's made a lot of people question their whole lives if you see what i mean you know what what is this all about where are they going what are they doing yeah. and stuff and yeah. and a lot of people are actually like changing their lives and thriving and other people it's just you know completely um devastating but uh yeah for me i've just been i, I still pay attention to what's going on but a lot of it's just noise and a distraction in, in my opinion mm. and uh so i'm just keeping my eye on on the ball and i'm just a lot happier when I'm focusing on creating and being an artist and working, you know, achieving my goals. And I think, um, you know, the the uh, the universe, the creator, God, whatever you want to call it, it likes to create. If you see what I mean. And mm -hmm. and um, how do how do we explain it? I mean, it's like you were saying earlier. You know, they they this whole system teaches you to be poor and scarcity and all this kind of thing. And it and you end up in this mindset where that's what you think if you see what i mean mm. whereas if um if you shift your mindset which i'm learning to do at the moment i just realize i've had all this years of you know programming and 
as I start to shift it, I'm finding that I'm starting to recognize, you know, more opportunities or coincidences, which I, are not coincidences in my opinion, but you know mm. what I mean? If I think if you're in alignment with what you're meant to be doing, your true purpose, if you see what I mean, things start happening for you. And, and being of service to other people as well. If oh, you see what I, mean. I love it, Sam. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah bro. Um, okay. Let's, let's cut right to yeah. it. Okay. Money. Money. I want to talk to you about money, okay? Because again, uh, you're 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 the money guy as far like in terms of me just raising my financial IQ, if I can yeah. borrow that term, and 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 kind of expanding my thinking about what is money. Let's go back to that that video that you watched that was a paradigm yeah. shift for you of Mike Maloney, and explain yeah. to me what that did for you. Yeah, well, I, I'd say prior to that video, I mean, I. I intuitively knew uh, I didn't want to be in debt. So I I, I got in debt um, in my late teens. I mean, not a massive amount in the grand scheme of things, but at that at that age, it was sort of seen quite a lot. And and actually, in, in the end, actually, my mum helped me pay off. I mean, I think it was about like, I think I was in debt about like a thousand pounds or something, which is, you know, nothing now. But um after that, I was just like, I don't ever want to get in debt again. I, that was it. I had a, I, I had a credit card. I, I was, you know, some of these banks they can be quite predatory, and they came to our university and like, oh, you know, get a credit card. Oh wow, <laughs> you're already in student <laughs> debt. Have some more. <laughs> yeah, the one time I had a credit card. And after that, I'm just like, I ain't ever getting a credit card again, man. Yeah. Damn, and uh, damn. so after that, I, I was just like, I, I don't want to be in debt. And you know, I worked. I got in the you know, doing the tree stuff. And I was always trying to like save money and, uh, you know, have some savings to fall, fall upon, fall back on. And then even in, you know, in, even in New Zealand, I had, you know, a little bit of savings, but nothing significant, even when I, even when I, um, met you, but the whole thing with money, it just sort of seemed like a, a whole, I, I was just, I'm not smart enough to understand this because, you know, in the mainstream media, they've got these like economists and stuff. And I, I feel like they, just over complicate everything so you, it's like they try and make it sound complicated so you don't understand it but they don't tell you how it really works if you see what i mean that i the fact that we have a fiat currency system where money's literally created out of thin air and they you know over the years and decades they just keep on printing it and printing it and it uh dilutes the um you, you know the the purchasing power of the currency and then have the illusion that the prices are going up and and uh when when what that documentary did it was one second pause 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 sorry sorry on that on that I'm, I'm so sorry to interrupt sam very rude of me but but yeah. didn't i hear that within recent history that there was another 6.2 trillion dollars inserted into the financial system what does that do for our individual purchasing power of any given currency now that that's us <laughs> dollars doesn't yeah, that, yeah. that affects us here in New Zealand? It affects you, and if you're in the oh, yeah. UK or in Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, as an, I mean, I'm really no financial expert at all. You know, I'm an artist at the end of the day. I, 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 I'm not that left side of the brain uh, orientated either. So I, I actually really, you know, struggle with maths, and you know, even there's a lot of stuff in the financial world that I, I don't understand it. If you see what I mean, but mm. just you know, the basics of it. But yeah, as I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure I wasn't like the. You know the U.S. dollar since 1913, when the the Federal Reserve was created, hasn't it lost something like over like 94 percent of its purchasing power or something? I mean, it's something, yeah. something like it's a, that's that, insane to think about it. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, and uh, yeah, uh, the other thing is is the fact that all fiat currencies go to zero in the end. It's got a hundred percent failure rate. So that's I, I when I started really looking into that, and it was um, uh, Mike Maloney's video of, of um, uh, was it his website? I think it's goldsilver.com or he's he's into gold and silver anyway. I just made complete sense of it. It's like gold and silver, real money. It's got it's of value. It's a, a uh, you know a relatively kind of scarce uh, asset. It mm -hmm. holds its purchasing power over a long period of time, mm -hmm. where it's you know currency. It's just just paper in it <laughs> so so is a way to kind of you know if 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 you know that the fiat currency is going to go to zero 
because mm. it, all fiat currencies have a history of going that way. There yeah. already are the rumorings, uh, the the the, the, um, the rumors. Uh, the, there's the the murmurs of of a uh, uh, a, a reset of sorts, right? Yeah. Uh, where they're just going to go, okay, new game, new rules. Yeah. Uh, it, so so we see all the indicators pointing in that direction. Do we need to shift to crypto? Well, I, uh, you, you know, obviously I'm into crypto. I do. And um, I got into it in 2017. Uh, at that point, I was, you know, looking, I was questioning everything, basically. I was mm, doing a mm. lot of research into a lot of things about, you know, how this world really works, if you see what I mean, and found that a lot of things that you're told in the mainstream isn't true. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, when I found out about um, uh, Bitcoin and the principles of it and the fact that there's a limited supply, only 21 million Bitcoins will ever be created and that it's uh, deflationary as well. And I just thought, I just instantly got the, the basic principles of it. And I was just like, wow, you know, it's uh, and you can secure your own money and be your own bank. And if you've got it stored properly, there's no way any, anybody can get it off you either you can't have your funds frozen or anything like that and um but actually the way i got into it was because you know i was just i was just doing a lot of research into anything into a lot of things and uh, i i found a channel um are we allowed to mention names of, of, of particular channels? Is it, I, I, is I it think really... so. I think so. But it just as long as people understand that this is just a, you know an open forum of ideas here, and um, yeah. that that we're so not I... we're not endorsing everything that these people no. say. I, I see my 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 personal take is I, I listen to everybody and I, I try to take yeah. what 100%. I think is applicable and makes sense to me, and I, I don't endorse fully or agree with fully no, no. everything Not that sure. anyone says. Yeah, you I know. mean, you know, I... I, I but go for it. Mention the name. I, I even, you know, listen to people like uh, Peter Schiff, who's into gold and silver, and he absolutely hates crypto. Mm -hmm. But I want to hear his reasons why he hates it as well. Like, I don't... Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. 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 But no, this particular t uh, channel, it's called the... Um, it's called the Dollar Vigilante, and it's a, it's a financial news channel but also in the context of things that are going on in the world. And one mm. of the main things was uh, a guy called Jeff Berwick, who presents it, is into cryptocurrency. But at that particular time in 2017, he started talking about a website called Steemit. Mm. And Steemit, it's it's basically like a blogging platform that's backed by a cryptocurrency called Steam. And I, I he did a whole video on how to use it. And I, I, I opened an account with it, because at the time they were even giving you free Steam. Uh, to join it and I was just like this is cool man I was, I was like I started posting my art to it and found that there's a whole art community on there and um, at the time so the way Steam it works it's got its whole it, it's got it you know a whole like you know ecosystem it's got its own token Steam and uh, I I was posting my art and posting some blog posts on there and um, it had gotten upvoted by some whales so whales people with a lot of steam so basically their upvotes were resulting in some of my posts earning several hundred dollars in in uh, steam and um jeff berwick in his video explained how you could then take your your steam that you earn and send it to an exchange and convert it to other cryptocurrency so i was just like i should probably learn about bitcoin because that's the main that's the main crypto. So I started buying Bitcoin through this website, Steam it. And at the time, I was obviously working on my art business. I had no money. How and much was Bitcoin at that time? Sorry, Sam. How it much was, was it? Eighteen hundred dollars. You're crazy. <laughs> you would buy it at eighteen hundred dollars. That's so expensive. <laughs> What's it now? And those are the day. Well, it's just at the time of this recording, the market's just had a massive dump. So when I checked it this morning, uh, I think a bit, one Bitcoin is worth thirty-eight thousand dollars. So the, oh, the market's okay. having a correction at the moment. Yep, yep. It just, you know what? It does it all the time. It doesn't even, it doesn't phase me at all. I mean, that's the thing with these um, hmm. uh, market corrections when they, when they really dip. That's when you want to buy because you, you know, it's, crypto's on sale. If you see yeah. what I mean. 
Didn't it I mean, get to um, didn't it get to sixty three thousand dollars or sixty four thousand dollars? Was that U.S. Yeah, or New uh, Zealand dollars? A few months ago, I had an all time high. I mean, I, I think yeah. I personally Bitcoin is going to do well in in, in the long yeah, run because yeah. it just the whole cryptocurrency space and all the new things in it is just such a paradigm shift and just such a shift in the way we've sort of traditionally uh, you know traditional banking if you see what i mean and and mm. um you know at the end of the day if if uh, the banking system fiat currency is so great then there wouldn't <laughs> there wouldn't be a need for people inventing cryptocurrencies so that's the way i see it anyway um mm. going back to uh, steam it anyway um yeah so at the time 2017 it was actually really difficult to buy bitcoin i was i was having to I was buying it from a website called Local Bitcoins. So it's basically other people in the country that got Bitcoins for sale, but the fees on it were absolutely massive. And you know what? I mean, back in the day, if I had the money, then I would have bought a lot more. But I mean, I was it, money. You know, I worked on my business, which I didn't know if that was going to go anywhere or not. And and uh, <laughs> but I could just. I could just, I could really, really see the potential in it, and just with every the information I was learning. Plus, you know, Steam it's a, it, it was a great site, and there's just all these, you know, I was finding like a whole community of of people that are just in, into, um, you know, freedom, sound money, um, you know, entrepreneurship, capitalism. I mean, you know, proper mm. capitalism, not the not the crony capitalism we got, you know, and capitalism's demonized and stuff. But to me, I, the, I could see how uh, cryptocurrency and some of these websites, some of these social media websites that are backed by crypto could help artists and, mm -hmm. you know, possibly generate a wealth effect and all that kind of stuff. So, I, yeah, I just, it just really excited me, basically. And um, I'm, I'm not very technology-minded, but I... I can often see the bigger picture with a lot of these things, even if I, even if I don't know the ins and outs of how it works. If you see what I mean. Sure. Yeah. So, um, despite all the, uh, <laughs> it's funny, despite all the naysayers, because I, uh, you know, I even had people laughing at me in 2017 when I said oh, I've been buying Bitcoin or whatever, and they, they thought it was funny, and I'm just saying, I, I said I think it's going to be huge. And yeah. Last yeah. year, I, some of those same people were asking me how to buy it. <laughs> Oh, wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. You know, so something I'm thinking about now, because again, anticipating change, watching these shifts, I'm thinking yeah. about um, integrating that into the, to my website is saying, okay, yeah. you could you could check out this way, or here's my Bitcoin address, and, yeah. and trying to integrate more of the cryptocurrency side of things. I'm also really interested in some of these privacy coins like uh, Pirate Chain and Monero. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I think w one of the things that gets me, I, I won't tell you how much it was, but <laughs> I just got my tax bill and I'm like, and I, I was just sitting there, just kind of leaning back in the chair, just scratching my head in such a funk and talking to Rachel about this, just going, how much do we have to pay? And she's like, this much. I'm like, are you serious? What? Yeah. Where is that going to come from? She's like, no, no, no. It's already, it's already there in the account, but it's, it's, uh, and it's gone. <laughs> it's kind of yeah. like, you know, I, and, and I'm like, wow. So I'm not, I, I understand taxation, but I'm also now starting to question the whole thing in a way. Like I understand, I understand the reasons that they say we need taxation to fix the yeah. roads. I mean, the roads are crap, you know, and, they, yeah. and it's like, but you know, I, it seems to me I mean, that my, the taxation only goes to service the debt that the country's gotten into. And then I see what the government is spending the money on. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I don't want to give you criminals any more of this because all it ends up doing is bloating the bureaucrats more and more and more. I'm like, I want freedom over here, man. I want yeah, yeah. I want peer to peer uh, private transactions, and that was one of the things that was really interesting to me about uh, things like Pirate Chain and Monero. Is this is yeah, this well, anonymity main, of it? You know, I, I think um, there's certainly been. I mean, we've obviously been looking into this a few years. Uh, a lot of people, or uh, how do you explain it? There's a lot of evidence to suggest that before long we could end up with central bank digital currencies yeah. that will have possibly some certain terms and conditions attached to them that if you don't comply with, they could just switch you off 
and you might not be able to that's funny you know, there's a um there's a bible verse about that uh, bible verse about that very thing sam yeah, you, yeah. you won't be able to buy or sell without your mark <laughs> yeah that's quite terrifying right yeah and listen my view is it's just like do what you want as long as you're not hurting anybody else yeah you do you and just as long as you're not hurting anyone else like don't yeah. tell me how to live my life if you see what i mean that's yeah that yeah that's the way i'm and and yeah. i just you know i don't I just want to. I just want to paint. Really, at the end of the day, I just want to paint and tend to my family. That's it, really. I just like with just these other people. Just leave me alone. You know. What I mean? <laughs> <But> <laughs> anyway, leave me alone, man. I'm painting waves yeah. over here. So, <laughs> the thing with Monero and Pirate Chain is the transactions are completely private because although a lot of people think even Bitcoin's private, it's not at all. No. Every transaction on it's on on an open ledger yeah. for anybody to have a look at. And it does just look like a load of code and everything, but you know, you can, it is possible to trace, you know, a wallet address to an owner, if you see what I mean. So mm -hmm. it's not, that's one thing you do have to keep in, sorry, one thing you do have to uh, keep in, keep in mind with a lot of cryptocurrencies is, a, you know, they're not, a lot of them are not private. Most of them aren't private and especially not Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong, man. I love Bitcoin, but it's just something. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, the, the, the thing about having physical cash at the end of the day because i still like cash and i'd still rather live in a society where we've got cash and you can carry out private transactions with people without you know any party needing to be involved if you see what i mean mm. Mm. so um i'm now not so worried about central bank digital currencies because we've got crypto and and just it still means you can trade and buy and sell if it really got that dystopian for example because you have got currencies like pirate chain and monero where it's completely all the transactions are completely anonymous and you know you what you don't want everybody knowing all your financial details if you see what i mean i mean yeah it'd be like uh you know and that's that is some of the disadvantages of bitcoin that are you know obviously completely open ledger you know you can sort of you know, you wouldn't necessarily want your business knowing how much you've, you know, you've gotten the books, if you if you see what I mean. Hmm. I'm probably not explaining it. That, no, I mean, no, well, no, 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 absolutely. You are. I think, though, just just for my benefit a little bit as well, because I could use a refresher here for anybody listening that it's like, OK, hang on a second. But 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 what is crypto? Um, yeah, yeah. I, first, the first thing I'd just say is where you been? But uh, but seriously, there yeah. are some people it's like it's like if I had to explain the cryptocurrency yeah. situation to people and go, OK, well, this is what crypto is. I don't think I could do it. Could you explain it to me? What is crypto? Yeah, well, I, can, I, I can briefly sort of try and explain what Bitcoin is. Let's yeah. use Bitcoin as an example. It's, it's basically a, a digital uh, currency where you can uh, trade peer to peer. So there's no third party. And it's as simple as you know, down, downloading a wallet app on your phone and you can literally uh, send value, a payment from one address to another, just like sending an email, mm -hmm. basically. And there's no third party involved. There's no, like, you know, bank involved, if you see what I mean, creaming mm -hmm. off. I mean, you do have to, like, pay miners fees and stuff. But, um, and it's, uh, it's, a lot of people think, um, Bitcoin, it's becoming a store of value, which I, I think it is as well, because it's it's the whole the whole system of the whole decentralized uh, network of computers that are, um, you know, processing the whole whole system. So that's that's one of the main things with Bitcoin is it's decentralized. There's no Bitcoin headquarters. There's no CEO. Mm. Um, no one even knows really who created it. It, it goes uh, the guy that's created it. it goes under the pseudonym of Satoshi Nakamoto, but no one knows who created Bitcoin mm. at all. It's, it's so, um, yeah, so it's decentralized. They solved the uh, double spend issue as well. So it means once you've sent a transaction, that's it. You can't accidentally send it again, if you see what I mean. Okay. So, and the other thing is, is there'll only be 21 million Bitcoins in existence. So one Bitcoin, of course, is divisible by many decimal places, but... Mm -hmm. Um, it's also becoming more and more of a, a scarce asset. So there's also 
things called miners and basically what they are are computers that are solving math equations and processing all the transactions and securing the network mm -hmm. and this is the where it gets into the computer stuff where it, like this is where i don't understand it if you see what i mean but mm. but um uh the miners are incentivized because when they when their computers uh, find a block so all the transactions are processed into blocks so it's, hence why it's called the blockchain but whichever computer finds the block gets rewarded with newly minted bitcoins and in the first um four years so um the first bitcoin was created in or bitcoin was created in 2009 so the first block which is called the genesis block that was that started in 2009 and with each block back then the system awarded 50 new bitcoins then after four years it halved to 25 bitcoins then after four years again uh it halved to 12 and a half bitcoins and then we had a there was a bitcoin halving last year and it, i think it's now 6.25 bitcoins for each block that's that's mined so basically every four years um it's becoming bitcoin itself is becoming more and more of a scarce asset which is part of the reason also why the price has gone up but the more the more people that are buying it and using it that also puts the price up plus you know people there's a lot of people uh, have lost bitcoins as well mm -hmm. um because i mean this is the other thing as well with the with the cryptocurrency is that you've got to be responsible for your own money because if you lose it for example Say you got Bitcoin, you got it stored in a wallet. If you lose it, it's your fault, basically. Yeah. I mean, we've yeah. what there is now is there are, um, uh, you know, financial institutions now, you know, such as like Crypto.com and things like that that are like cryptocurrency banks, and you can put your money there, and they're kind of take care care of it, uh, take care of it for you. Mm -hmm. But there is a there is a thing um, in the crypto world where they say not not your keys not your coins so basically the way it's you secure it is to have your private keys so if anyone has ever downloaded a cryptocurrency wallet and certainly we, you know we've obviously done it if you see what i mean mm -hmm. the wallet will give you a seed phrase and it's like 12 words that you'd find in the yeah. dictionary mm -hmm. and you write those words down and it means if you'd ever lose your phone with your wallet on it or whatever you could just download a new wallet and then type in those 12 words and you get your coins back so your, I mean, your coins aren't your coins aren't on your wallet. Your wallet is just what accesses the coins. Yeah, is exactly. That... Yeah, storing a private key. Right, right. Yeah, um, yeah. Can I just, sorry, just to back up for a second. So I'm starting to hear it. So this is kind of, again, uh, in my brain, it's, it's a lot for me to process. So is the fact that there is scarcity built into this thing, is that, that's what makes it valuable then? It's perceived value because it's supply that, is limited. So it's supply and demand. Yeah, that's... And and is yeah, this yeah. why that our, our purchasing power now with the old system of fiat currency, uh, air money, helicopter money, whatever we call it, is is that why? Because I mean, again, they've just they've just put in six point two trillion dollars. I don't think people really realize how big a trillion is. Oh, it's massive. I, I think it's I heard no, something. Uh, oh, go on, go on. There was something about time. Was that what you yeah, were going to yeah. say? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. If you were to count, if you were to count seconds, so say we each dollar was a second if you counted mm -hmm. from one to a million dollars it would take you 12 days to count from one to a million so and wow. i've heard a billion dollars would take 32 years to count uh to a billion so a okay. trillion is something like i think it's something like thirty-two thousand years <laughs> so that's like the procession of the equinox or something like that. That's just to give you an idea of how big a trillion dollars is. It's, it's friggin' huge, man. That's epic, bro. <laughs> that is so epic. It's, it's yeah. Oh. Anyway, I, I mean, just going back to crypto, I think it's exciting because I, I personally think it can help artists and just creatives in general. And there's okay. a lot... The, the space is evolving really quickly and there's you know there's loads more platforms now mm. you know social media where you can you know post uh, your art you, there's alternatives to youtube like uh three speak and odyssey library or whatever where you can monetize your videos and you get paid in cryptocurrency mm. and um you know you've got things like uh uh 
the, the wallet app called Handcash, which supports a load of uh, that's powered by uh, Bitcoin SV, which is a that's a fork of Bitcoin. But, hmm. um, you know, they have like alternatives to Twitter and Instagram and stuff. And you can earn crypto from posting. And I, I, there's just so many cool things with it, in my opinion. Hmm. I just think it's a really exciting space. And then you've got the whole nft things which I'm, I'm i'm in the uh you know i'm in the process of researching that i'm still like I, uh, I, t- I, tell me about that well you know more than me and i'm i'm watching everything go the do you know what when when i when it suddenly it becomes comes on my radar now i don't watch tv or or uh, no. movies anymore i barely listen to music i just think it's all so dark and corrupt and i hate the industry that it's coming from but i, 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 I hate it's a very strong but but south park has come up on my radar and i saw a couple of youtube clips of from some south park episodes where they were making fun of nfts or or <laughs> so, yeah. and i thought okay the minute it makes it <laughs> onto south park is maybe the minute that it's it's reached this point um so it's kind of like the zeitgeist at the, at the mo- you know, it's it's very much the thing at the moment. What, okay, okay, start from the beginning, Sam. What is an NFT? What does that mean? What's this about? NFT, okay. Um, so I don't know a great deal about it. I do, I do have some NFTs that I've created, but I haven't actually like promoted them yet because I'm more just trying to figure it out. And, um, but basically, NFT, it stands for non-fungible token. So the word right. fungible means, so say, for example, like the US dollar is fungible because one US dollar is the same as another US dollar is the same as another US dollar. So people recognize that as being the same. So that currency is fungible, whereas a non-fungible token, very often there will only be one token. Right. And it will be, um, in many cases, it will be like a unique piece of art like at the moment mm-hmm. there's a whole thing of people making art of uh you know primate apes and things like that uh, <laughs> and, and just hang on pause again for a second you told me just uh day before yesterday i think it was how much one of those sold for just just to get this on people's radar like an nft so there's, what's there's i think there's uh it's it's on a it's on a website called OpenSea which sells NFTs and and there's one profile on there of uh, they sell a lot of NFTs but it's called Board Ape Yacht Club I think and it's just basically pictures of apes and so I think some of these things have sold for like literally millions of dollars so it's paid for in um, uh, I think I think most of these sites use um, Ethereum which is another cryptocurrency is a smart contract i'm i'm not fond of ethereum at all and especially as the uh, the gas fees on them are just ridiculous so it's just uh, I, I don't get it man but that's that's just me but i mean uh, okay hang on hang on you're melting my brain so there's a picture of an ape selling for millions of dollars what yeah. when you buy it what do you do with it <laughs> what do you do with it like what's <laughs> you got an ape it's like it's like oh check this out i got a picture how much does that cost you five million get out of here idiot like what, what do you do with it are we gonna are we gonna upset a load of nft people i don't i don't care I'm still <laughs> because I'm, 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 don't get me wrong right i'm not against nfts at all i'm sort of, i'm quite i'm quite fascinated with it but you know i'll be honest i don't have any nfts i prefer cryptos that i can yeah. literally use right. as money that's my thing so um and I'm and I'm really into um, decentralized finance or I, DeFi. I, I, at the I get it, I but, but you've you've just put this but, out there into the space, all right? I know artists are using it. I don't. Yeah. I, but I, I, Sam, help me out here, bro. Like I, well, I, I'm I, still I'm still I, stuck on I'm still stuck on on a on a yeah. uh, on an ape selling for for millions of dollars. Like how does yeah, that? Yeah, well, I guess it's because it's you know it's, it's scarcity and people think it's <laughs> valuable. But it's a digital. I mean, it, it, this space is changing so much because there's there's uh, you know there's the metaverse as well, and there's people like buying virtual oh. real estate in it and advertising and stuff and being able to advertise in the oh. metaverse and paying money to. It's just a whole new. Okay. Paradigm okay. shit. I mean, it's. I mean, it's still pretty exciting. <laughs> uh, okay. Hang on a second. Pause. 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 All right. All right. So me, you, you brought in metaverse. Okay. Yeah. Um, I I will just put this out there that uh okay you you know you know when you realize you're you've reached a certain age, um 
and and it's kind of like oh wow it's it's now real i'm now i'm now a, a, an adult i'm now yeah. a functioning member of society and or or you, like you have a moment where to put it a better way you kind of understand your parents a little bit i yeah. remember my parents you know, my father in particular, you know, would walk into my room, I'd be doing something my like uh, drawing or doing homework or whatever. I'd be listening to a bit of music and he would go, what is this crap you're listening to, right? <laughs> okay. And and I know it's probably a really bad analogy, but I, I kind of, I, I hear what people are listening to these days now and again, you know, you hear, see something come up in an ad or, or whatever, or this or yeah. that. And, and uh, you'll, you'll see it, you know, just being on the internet, you, you, you kind of get a sense of what's out there. I look at yeah. it going, the general, what are they growing up with? This isn't music. And now I suddenly go, yeah. whoa, I'm worried that this whole digital trend is going to be something like that, where it's either like you jump on board and you take part in this, or, yeah. you know, you get left behind. And, and they were saying the same thing about the internet, right? They yeah, said in the yeah. internet, the internet was going to be a fad, right? It's like, oh, this will blow over. This is not going to be any big deal. Yeah, People yeah. said that was published in newspapers. And, oh, yeah. and, and so I think there was a particular uh, real estate that was, you know, the film and television industry, the radio industry, the, all this. There, there was real estate there for them to defend aggressively. I get that, you know. But I'm looking at this like metaverse thing. This is becoming the whole rage. And I, and I, I yeah. got to tell you right now, man, I don't like it. And, and I'm very suspicious of it. Anytime, yeah. and I'll say this, like the people that watch me or, or know me and, and follow me a little bit closely on, on Patreon, for instance, they, they know I'm a, I'm a little bit of a conspiracy theorist. Okay, I make a light of it. I make a joke. All, all I'm saying is it looks pretty flat to me. That's all I'm saying. But anyway, um, <laughs> But but the minute you put an all seeing eye in your promo video, I start to worry. And I, I like plain as day, yeah. there's a there's an all seeing eye with snakes circling around it. And I'm like, oh, this new street artist is creating great new street art. Oh, it's animated. I'm looking at it going, dude, that's a friggin' eye with s snakes circling around. Is anybody else? Hello, is anybody else picking this up? They tell you what they're doing. Are you going to take part of this? <laughs> I, I, I think the day is coming very soon. I'm praying for his return. I'll tell you that much right now. You know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about the boss himself. Yeah. I'm praying for his return. But the thing is, is that it, you're not going to be able to take part in society. You're not going to be able to buy or sell without your mark. I think that they're, they're trying to wrap this up. The money side of things, this is why I'm a little bit skeptical about cryptocurrency. They're going to take the, the money and the financial yeah. side of things. They're going to create this this digital ghetto and they're going to say, right, this is you. And they're going to take your physical self and your digital self and they're going to merge the two. In fact, Mr. Dr. Evil said he was going to do that very thing. Dude, I, I'm looking yeah. at this stuff and I'm going, at I mean, what point do I go, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. Yeah, I, 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 but as an artist, yeah. I'm kind of going, I mean, also, how do sorry, I take advantage? Sorry, the... Go on. Yeah, it's a real, it, I, I think it's like, I'm not really that excited about the metaverse either, but I'm, I'm not really into computer games, to be honest, either. Yeah. So, because a lot no, of it all into the gaming world. And you know what? I, a lot, a lot of all this technology, because, yeah, it, it, you know, I don't fully trust crypto either, if you say I love it, but I, I'm, you know, I'm still a little bit skeptical. You know, I'm aware that there's, it's, you know, manipulated and all that kind of stuff. So I'm, I'm under no illusions, if you see what I mean. But I, I, I like technology as well. I like the internet. I think the internet is brilliant. I think, um, you know, despite the fact that loads of people moan about YouTube because of the censorship and stuff, there's, there's still awesome content on YouTube. Like, Oh sure. I've I've learned so much over the last few years because of yeah. YouTube. I still love YouTube, right? Yeah, yeah. And um, and I think like with anything, it's a tool. It can be used for good or it can be used for evil. I mean, it's like a knife. You know, you can use it for, uh, you know, cutting up some food or something, or you can use it to kill somebody. Do you know what I mean? It's don't it, go it's doing not that. Not bad in itself. It's just the. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Don't no. <laughs> Murder doesn't look too good on your CV, mate. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so there are a lot of things uh, changing. And um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I still think a lot of this stuff can help you. And, and also, the other thing is, I, I don't want to buy into a like, dystopian reality. I don't want to manifest. I know there's bad stuff going on, but 
a lot, a lot, of, a lot of the changes that need to be made come from changing yourself at the end of the day. And yeah, so I don't know if you've seen the movie um, V for Vendetta, but there's a scene in the in the movie where he's hijacked the um, television station and he's broadcasting to the British nation, and um, and uh, the whole Aussie society has become a complete dystopia. And he says, "I suppose you're wondering how we got into this mess." And he goes, "Well, if you really want to know, you need only look in the mirror." Which is why I think a lot of the solutions to what's going on today is to actually change yourself wow. and start doing things like creating, start that business that you wanted to do or follow your, follow your dream, follow your passion, just stop listening to the outside noise and paying attention to, because it's just, it's not serving you. It's not serving anybody really at the end of the day, all this, you know, being manipulated and fighting against each other and all this kind of stuff. Like when you, in alignment with what you want to do so you know in our case it's being artists because that's what i love to do it's my passion man i love it so much it's what i live for man i think about art painting all the time and when you start focusing in on that then stuff starts happening it, and uh we, we need to and i've found in this for myself we need to break these horrible old mindsets that we've been in that we've been programmed with you know scarcity and all this kind of stuff because that's what they want for you because they don't want you to re they don't want to re you realizing how powerful you are if you see what i mean mm. so we need to get out of this and that's how you I, I think that's how we can change things if we start focusing on our you know our own things you know as i say start your art business just start where you stand or whatever mm. when we stop focusing our attention on it on the stuff that's not serving us <laughs> it's going to go away in my opinion that, so, uh, I don't know how we got into that. Right? Well, and and maybe and again, that's that's the kind of thing that I just I I feel personally I need to hear because I I do spend uh, my days like while I'm painting I'm doing things that don't involve like making content or whatever I. I yeah, I spend my days listening to a lot of alternative media and what's going on, and um, yeah. and and yeah, it does lead you down some really dark rabbit holes, and you end up, oh, yeah. you do you do feel very isolated, very very lonely, and also very uh, despondent about the dystopia that you that seems and appears to be be there. But this really is yeah. a focus issue, um, and I have to continually remind myself, hey, don't focus on this you know, focus on the most high yeah, and, and, you know, focus yeah, on that, on that yeah. as almost like the, the, the ideal in a way. Yeah. I mean, whatever you focus your attention on grows, doesn't it? So, I mean, I mean, look, mm. there's nothing wrong with listening to the alternative media, but even they can sometimes be just as bad as the mainstream media and they can, you, you know, you don't know if at the end of the day, even what they're saying is truth either. There's a lot of disinformation yeah. in, in both. And, you know, some of these, uh, alternative media people they are just like doom and gloom all the time well i mean the thing mm. is on the point now look i know what's going on i'm just i'm i i'm interested in solutions and solving these problems mm. rather than doom and gloom can serve me at all so mm. i'd have to like really just lay off the uh alternative media i mean i i keep up with what's going on but i you know i learn stuff instead that can empower me so like you know, increasing my financial IQ, for example. Right. Or le learning about uh, crypto, learning about uh, business and entrepreneurship, learning about mindset, meditation, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, manifesting abundance, if you see what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, working working on my craft, painting. Yeah. All, all yeah. that kind of thing. Looking after myself. Just And I just, the more I do that, the, the happier I am and the more, everything flows better in my life right just everything starts working if you yeah. see what i mean because yeah. i just think outside is noise and it's a distraction mm -hmm. yeah yeah <laughs> so hey uh, my uh, mind, I'm, mm. I'm, I'm, I'm i'm more of an optimist anyway i i think i think yeah all right we might be in for some rough times but i'm not subscribing to a you know dystopian future and i i don't I think in the long run, it's not going to happen. It's not going to pan out the way what they want for us, if you see what I mean. Because the thing is, about the last couple of years, it has caused a lot of people to start questioning everything and mm. stuff. And as you, you know, I'm not religious at all, but I certainly believe in God. And, uh, you know, as you say, they, I, I believe, you, you, well, you say the second coming, I think that's, 
uh, the awake kind of, uh, I think it's called Christ consciousness, isn't it? well that that's what that yeah i (laughs) that's an interesting one maybe a topic for another podcast like i whilst i i appreciate that point of view and and i'm open to however god wants to do it i mean this is not a christian podcast by any means it just happens to be my particular worldview i know we've got different views there but i um you know, I, I'm open to however God wants to do it. I certainly think that a shift in consciousness is needed anyway, but I, I'm more subscribed yeah. to the idea that he'll be uh, coming back the way he left. Um, you know, so that yeah. that he, he might look, it's God. God can do whatever he wants. He might appear in the clouds for all we know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but I, 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 there's a lot of stuff yeah. that's happening right now that is, I, I'm shocked how literal it is. You know, when you when you read the book of Revelation, I'm shocked at how literal shaker. stuff is is going on. Um, yeah. You know, I I like for instance, I'll, I'll just throw one little tidbit out there. Um, you know, if you go to Revelation uh, six chapter two and you start reading about the seals that are broken and the loosing of the horses, um, the first horse that that is loosed is uh, the white horse. Uh, and he that sits upon it has a bow and and a crown was given to him and he goes forth conquering and to conquer. And then you go into the original Latin of what the word crown is. Corona corona and crown are the same word. And people often say, oh, well, a bow, it's like a bow and arrow. What else would a horse be going into battle with? Or, you know, what else would make sense? So it's a bow and arrow. But bow has got many different meanings. And you got to go to the original Greek, the word for bow, Strong's 5115. It's toxon. T-O-X-O-N, and it means the simplest form of fabric. And I, I look at that and I go, okay, now it's starting to build a little bit of a picture here. So we got a corona with a simple oh, form wow. of fabric. I, I, I just ask, is there a link between that and what people wear on their faces now? This is global. It's certainly gone forth conquering mm-hmm. and to conquer. So I look at that sort of thing and I'm like, oh, wow, my spidey sense is pinging right now. Like, like what is going oh, on? Yeah. And now I definitely just got my ass deleted off every single platform on the internet for saying that. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and it's gone. Well, I'm, I'm not... And it's gone. Well, again, and actually, if we, if, if we, you know, even dial it back to the, the cryptocurrencies, you know, there are, there are alternative platforms now where you can put out content. Yeah. And there are anyway, if you see what I mean. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, yeah, um, yeah. you know, Rumble's another really good one as well. And yeah. uh, you've, you've got to, I think you just got to, you know, prepare yourself as well and anticipate things that might happen, if you see what I mean. But yeah, uh, anticipate that change. Know, um, mm. There are all opportunities out there. And I think especially for artists as well. Mm. I mean, really, you know, it's, whilst it is crazy times we live in, there's never been a better time to make a living as an artist. I mean, it's, it's literally I love that. The, the, yeah. um, the tools you've got available right now that you didn't even have 10 years ago. Like you got the internet. It's easy to build a web, a, a website. You don't even need to know the code. It's easy to set up e-commerce on there. Yeah. If you, if you sure I mean, to yeah. have a payment system, like it's, there's never been actually a better time to do stuff like that than right now. Oh I mean. man. I, I, I love that. I love that. That's so positive, isn't it? I mean, that's so, that's really inspiring hearing you say that. You know, because yeah. you're right, man. I mean, the the tools that are available. What what did what did what you have maybe 10, 20 years ago is you would put together a body of work and you'd beat the pavement yeah. and you'd go and find a gallery to represent you. I mean, look, regardless of what anybody thinks about what's behind what's going on today, the reality is is that the retail s- sector has taken a massive kick. Oh, yeah. and, and and what's what's going to happen? What are the consequences and fallout from that? Like right now, for instance. I have a solo show that's going to be yeah. happening in October, maybe, that I can't go to. Dude, yeah. I'm not going to be there because I can't get out of the country. And in fact, yeah. I can't get off the island. Yeah. And I'll just say, just I, they don't let people like me on airplanes. So yeah. you, you can put two and two together. But I, I'm just, I'm going, I'm looking at this going, and, and I, I'm, hey, People can make their own decisions, and I'm fine with that. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to make mine. But I just look at this and I go, 
wow, there is a shift. How do you do that? And so it's like, yeah, you better be anticipating these changes right now. You better be exploring these options and your opportunities, because if you're thinking you're going to build a body of work or you're going to go to art school, you're going to get in a gallery and it's going to be happy days, A, B, C. It's not. You're going to go from A to H to Z, back to F, back to this. And it's going to be a weird path, but you got to learn it all, right? Yeah. You, you need to, um, yeah, I mean, if you get, I guess if you're going to stay in that old that old way of doing things, because the world's changing. It's, yeah, it's always changing. And, um, you know, it's like you said, you, you prior to 2008 were just selling paintings and that's how you're making a living. And then suddenly the well dried up and you were like, what yeah. do I do now? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And you obviously learned a very good lesson from that. As it was well, painful, you, but yeah. And, and look where you are now, man. And this is, an, this is another thing because, um, you know, this whole system teaches us this kind of victim, victim mentality and learn yeah. helplessness and all this kind of stuff. Mm. When, Really, some of these situations can be the best thing for you. You might not realize it at the time because it's horrible. Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, yeah. But I agree. It depends on your way of looking at it. Because in your case, for example, you were like, "I, I still want to, like, you know, paint for a living." It would be a crime if you had to go and get a job, like, you know, like stacking shelves or not, not to, not to, uh, you know, disrespect that kind of work. But for someone you know who really wants to you know with your talent and wanting to paint and things like that and you couldn't do it because mm. uh because of that situation you're in i, I don't know if that's a very good analogy well no no it is i mean look is, look man i mean i had i had to do that i had to do the the job uh it, yeah, yeah. back in the beginning um you know i was working at a a milk distribution uh depot it was a giant fridge the size of, yeah. a, of an aircraft hangar. The joke was, is that um, they would open the door, I'd turn the light on for them, you know, but anyway. Um, but <laughs> I, I, uh, I, I, you'd come back just smelling like yogurt and cheese and it was just awful. But then at the t- same time, I was thinking the whole time while I was taking milk from here and placing it over there because Coles wants this and Woolworths wants that yeah. and the corner store wants that. I was thinking that... Um, you know, of paintings the entire time, thinking one day I'm yeah. going to be out of here. And I wasn't particularly stuck for that long, but, you know, there is also a time and place for hustling. There's a time and place to be yeah. learning. Um, now, you know, my my particular angle on this whole thing, and people have heard me say this before, it's, it's uh, y- you want to diversify, you want to be aware and try and anticipate change to the best of your opinion, it, yeah. it, uh, the best of your ability. But, but in my opinion, like... You, it, it is it is hard to know exactly what's going to be happening. All yeah. I'm saying is it's going to change. I'm not saying I know that it's going to happen. I'm just saying something's coming. Yeah. Bank yeah. on that. Something's coming. So what are you going to do if if there's a massive upset in the gallery sector? What are you going yeah, to do exactly. if suddenly yeah. people aren't buying paintings? It's yeah. like, well, I, I don't know. And and now I've gone one step further. What do you do if they tell you you can't buy or sell? What do you do? Yeah, exactly. And yeah. so now I'm going, I, I got to get to the country. I got to be able to fish, grow my own food. You know, yeah. uh, I, I'm getting, I'm trying to build my life to a point now. I'll just tell you this and then I'll, I'll get off this one. Um, if you can't grow it or catch it, you can't eat it. If you can't make it, you can't have it. That's a yeah. weird position to be in. And just, and I'm not saying we're there. Maybe one day we will. Maybe one day we won't. I, I mean, I get your particular point of view, and it's probably best. Look, I'll take a leaf from your book. Let's not focus on the dystopian or the negative. But just in thinking of those terms, it's caused me to go, if I had to take 100% responsibility for myself and all of my needs, yeah. whoa, whoa, how do, you, how do you do that? And then I, I yeah. realize that I'm woefully unprepared in that regard. And so what it caused me to do is start building new skills, which is really interesting yeah, yeah. that the way it shapes you as a person. I find myself like literally uh, chopping wood, carrying water and growing stuff. And, and it's, yeah. it's an interesting, I like it. I prefer that it as a lifestyle, but if, if, if the crud does hit the fan, then I guess you're somewhat prepared, but I will just say, and I'll get off this one that the, I think the best place for me to prepare is just spiritually, you know, get as yeah. close to the most high as I possibly can. Again, I'm just going to say that's my individual 
feeling about it, people can do what they're going to yeah. do. That's fine. Um, that's just yeah, how get, I feel about get, it. Get your mind in a good place. Yeah, Try man. not to focus on the noise outside and yeah. start focusing on on uh, what you want to do, being in alignment with what you're passionate about and get Amen, working brother. and creative and get creative and, you know, start your art business, start your YouTube channel, whatever. Do you know what I mean? Just yeah, that's way. And, and one other thing as well, gratitude, be thankful for everything you got. That, that's something I'm learning a lot more recently is being thankful. Amen, dude. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Gratitude now, goes a long way. Because well. hmm. a lot of the time, you know, things aren't as bad as they seem. <laughs> <laughs> Worst things happen at sea, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love the, I see I love this about our conversations man it's it, it, it's it's always it's always a positive like I don't I don't think you understand that effect you have on me and it really <laughs> and and I uh, yeah it's it does keep me going um look before the call completely breaks apart here because I'm noticing a dip in the quality here with the internet I, I'm rural you're reasonably rural as well where, yeah. where you are uh, we don't have a fiber optic connection here um but uh, the the I, I would like to propose a bit of a a study or a a challenge here Sam between yeah. us if we can and let's 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 uh, come back together here and then talk about it at a later date but this nft this non-fungible token. Yeah. Okay, I, I realize, so so you're you're kind of looking into that. I'm gonna start yeah, looking yeah. into this. For a laugh, why don't we create some NFTs and come back yeah. and talk about this at a later date? <laughs> I yeah, can't yeah, believe we're doing this. Yeah, the, it uh, won't be, uh, listen, it won't be a monkey on a yacht. It won't be, it'll be no, something. No, no, no. <laughs> no, there'll be, there'll be images of my, there'll be images of uh, my paintings and um, I won't be, I, I won't be selling them for millions of dollars either. It'll be just like, <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's, that's I will. That's one of the things with <laughs> NFTs. You could, I you could use them to like tip a creator, for example, and you you just sell them for a small amount of money, buy mm. an NFT off your, uh, you know, off a creator like that you like. You know, could be an artist, could be you know someone that's providing content on YouTube, or online, or whatever that you think is valuable, mm -hmm. and just help them out. And you know, with with any creators in general, especially ones online, I mean, not necessarily just in the art world, but just anything, you know, if, if you like, if you like what they do, if you see what I mean, and you want to support them, just, you know, even uh, like either buy something off them if they're, they're selling something or, uh, you know, give them a tip or perhaps if they're selling an NFT or something, you know, buy an NFT off them or, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? Just even just, just a small like a, amount of, money if you see what i mean often will mean the world to a a content creator that's trying to make a living creating yeah. content if you see yeah. what i mean yeah so i'd say this about you know not in you know not just like us if you see what i mean I'm, i mean a, any kind of content that you watch online if you like that content creator then um yeah help them out <laughs> buy them a <laughs> coffee them allow them to carry on making the content that you like <laughs> yeah absolutely <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And I will so, say, you know, that, that it's, it's, I, I certainly appreciate it. I mean, I, I, I love the people dearly that, that are supporting this. I mean, and yeah, even, absolutely. even people that can't uh, necessarily feel they, they can't afford to, to support it, but just, just watch the videos and give it a like or subscribe to the channel. Yeah, I mean, it all like, helps. It. Yeah. Even yeah, sharing absolutely. it. Yeah. It I mean, like, you know, if mm. I could, I, I would give all, all my content away for free but you know at the end of the day you know we've all got to make a living as well and i see absolutely yeah. nothing wrong yeah because that's another thing especially in the art world we get really funny about or awkward about selling your art or yeah. selling a product that you've created and you know as if it's almost bad to like make money and there's nothing wrong with it at all if you see what i mean if you're yeah. providing value hmm. then um yeah so i as i say i try and give away a lot of free content mm -hmm. as well but um you know obviously sell videos and things like that and certainly you know with video editing they take a very long time to make oh, plus goodness. you know painting them and stuff and yeah, yeah so but mm. you know something like that I, I mean i i for example i try and keep my videos as cheap as possible i mean you know the most of the ones i got about an hour long you know 15 dollars. i mean that's a way to say for me, for example, you could support me and you get some 
something in return you get a video out of it if you see what i mean yeah, yeah. so it's like it's better than even donations if you see what i mean yeah absolutely <laughs> but i mean yeah not just people like me i mean any any kind of content creator that's creating something that you like that's so the nft things even um you know another way that you could support you know a particular content creator because i i do i have already got some nfts for sale for not very much at all and i i'm because i'm still experimenting with it and uh, i've only just started doing this so we, we we can work on this together as well awesome man awesome um, because i'm i'm actually going to be uploading i'm actually going to be uploading them to a couple of different sites so i've, I've already got some on open sea and um i've just been approved by crypto.com to upload nfts on there that's on a completely different blockchain awesome uh, i really like uh, crypto.com anyway i, I think they doing some really great things awesome and uh, anyway i'm not by the way i'm not i'm not endorsed by them or, or uh, <laughs> like uh, yeah no no for sure for sure, sure. and uh yeah uh, what else do we need to say none of this is financial advice i <laughs> uh, don't worry man i'll i'll, I'll yeah, yeah. i i i've said something yeah. like that up the up well, the front think, of the episode think, people yeah, know, I, think people know. Look, yeah. I think we should look into the whole nft thing as well because yeah. um i i i think some of them are pretty cool i mean I'm a little bit baffled how some of them are literally selling for millions of dollars and it's just a picture of an ape. <laughs> but hey, there you go, man. Oh, more power to them. So Sam, 2022, new year, new creative start, new direction. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna take a lead from your book here, brother. You, you've inspired me. Um, I'm going to focus on purpose. I'm going to get off the, the, those, those conspiracy theory channels. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm going to let's focus. Get, let, let, let's get off the fear train, man, because fear is not doing anybody any good anywhere. You're so right, man. You're fear so right. Is, fear is really the, that's the only main card that they've got this whole, whatever you want to call it. Fair enough. And that's, yeah. And it, it's not good for you whatsoever. It puts in this horrible low vibrational right. state. And yeah. living in fear is not a good thing. And half the things that you're afraid about aren't, aren't uh, ever going to happen anyway, if you see what I mean. <laughs> well, yeah, 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 probably. Yeah, man, look, look, uh, for sure. Um, and so and so, when you're not occupying your mental energy and burning a whole bunch of mental fuel on that yeah. stuff that you don't want to have happen, uh, you know, you can focus on the things that, that make the world a better place and make you happy. And so exactly. the, uh, here's, here's an experiment everyone can do. Go. Start, instead of living in fear, start living with the change in your mindset to one of abundance and a creativity and start working on the thing that speaks to you and your passion and right. start ignoring the noise outside that they're trying to keep you in fear. And yeah. if everyone would do that, well, this problem would be gone, wouldn't it? What a better world we'd live in. <laughs> ah yeah 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 see just just even thinking about that it's like <laughs> what if you're afraid to let the fear go <laughs> do you see what i'm doing it, fearception yeah. well <laughs> when see i i've i've you know i watch a lot of channels on youtube as well yeah, I, I watch yeah. you know mindset and abundance you okay. know channels and that kind of thing like mm. uh you know I, particularly at the moment uh been watching um, a channel by a guy called Ralph Smart, uh, who I found that guy last year. Oh, no, it was it in 2020? I mean, he mm -hmm. got me straight away out of the slump that I was in. I'm just like, yeah, man, I'm just like, <laughs> I need to stop being okay. a little B-I-T-C-H. And so it worked for working. you. Uh, the, that, that worked for you. Okay, you know, for, good, yeah, good, yeah, man. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, you know, another good one, uh, another guy called Jake Ducey. Um, okay. Check these channels out on YouTube because they're just, these guys are there to help you, man. And um, mm. they've done mm. it as well. Mm. You know what I mean? And, and uh, it just, it, it will just make your whole world look completely different, mm. in my opinion. <laughs> you know, I, I again, um, I, I, yeah, I, I, I'm all for it. Whatever, whatever you feel kind of fits that, that view that you have of, of yeah. the, the way the world works and, and, and also just kind of shifting your focus from from that thing that you're, you know, you're worried about or you're afraid of onto something that's positive. I mean, because mm -hmm. despite whatever was going on over 2020 and 2021, and I'll tell you, like, like, I, I took a break from the podcast and, and a lot of things in my life um, because I just, I, I was looking at the way the world was going and I was, I, I suddenly just had to cut things off. 
yeah. and make make and make a decision. But then I was like, and then I started thinking, like, do I do I want to even bring this back? What am I going to talk about? And and that's why it's perfect that you're here today, and we're talking about this, and we could start 2022. Okay, yeah, I got off to a little bit of a late start here, but but we could start 2022 really focusing on that creativity, really focusing on our passion yeah. for art, and taking advantage, Sam. Sam, taking advantage of some of these opportunities, yeah. as weird as they sound, it's there. And if yeah. there's a way we can use it to help our art business, let's do it. So Sam, 100%. 2022, let's jump into NFTs. Let's have a look. Let's come back together again yeah, yeah. and talk about what we've learned in this process. Uh, but man, I've had a blast today. Thank you so yeah, much no, for talking to me on this. <laughs> <laughs> I hope, um, <laughs> no, at the end of the day, I mean, I, um, yeah, you know, this is just my view of the world. And, and uh, you know, obviously, I don't want to offend anybody, you know, just by some of the stuff we talked about. I hope we haven't offended anybody. If you uh, see it wasn't I mean. our intention. Um, Let's put it that way. Our intentions no, all love. I, you know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, I, 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 I want to help people. I like, I want to see people do well. If you see what I mean, it's in our interest, like mm -hmm. for us to do well. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it, this it, and again, I mean that scarcity mindset. It's like, oh no, it's overpopulated. It's oversaturated. There's too yeah. many people already on YouTube. There's too many people with websites or online or this or that yeah. or that. Or gallery has too many artists already. You know, it's it's done. I can't compete with that rubbish. Look, start where you stand. There's room oh, for everybody. You've got something to say. You've, everyone's art. You know, if we, yeah. if we just use art as an example, everyone's unique and different. Hmm. Mm. And just, um, you know, a lot of people, you know, I've subscribed to some art channels where I'm just, you know, a lot of the time it's just them just chatting to the camera about, you know, the way they see their art or, uh, you know, their view of, of what's going on in their lives, if you see what I mean, in, mm. in terms of their art business and stuff. And I think it's really, really cool to watch. I love watching that, that stuff. So, I mean, you know, you don't have to be, you know, an amazing artist or anything, just you know start right from the beginning maybe you could be someone that's never painted in your life start a youtube channel right now my painting journey i've never painted in my life or whatever here we go and start i mean i reckon that'd be awesome yeah do you know what i mean that's yeah. an idea for you <laughs> yeah yeah there you go there you go hopefully this is uh yeah inspired some people to uh yeah. to take the leap with us the year that we uh that we um and that we work on ourselves we work on our we work on things that inspire us, if you see what I mean, and we get creating. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love that. I love that. Yeah. Sam, uh, what's one thing that you would you would love to uh, to leave the people with that are that are listening to this now and uh, watching? Look, just as I say, uh, yeah, focus on yourself, get your mind right, express gratitude. Be thankful for where you are, and uh, yeah, work. Um, you know, work on what speaks to you. Work on your creativity. What, set yourself some goals if you see what I mean. Yeah, just the other thing is, is just just stop paying attention to the to the noise because it's a distraction and it's not there to serve you. If you see what I mean, ask yourself: Is it helping me? Is this is this serving me? And if it's not, then just don't pay attention to it focus on what speaks to you if you see what i mean mm. and uh yeah you know gratitude abundance happiness <laughs> i love it All these things man <laughs> i love it sam thank you so much for joining me on this episode of the creative endeavor no it's, it's awesome we should, uh, we should definitely have to do this again soon i reckon would love to Well, I really hope that you've enjoyed this episode of the Creative Endeavor podcast. It is so good to be back with another episode. And a huge thank you and a shout out to my friend, Samuel, for joining me. Thank you so much. Really appreciate you. And really looking forward to the next installment where we talk even more about cryptocurrencies. And let's, uh, let's see where this whole NFT thing's going. This is going to be exciting. So watch this space. Now, if you want to follow Samuel and see his work, then make sure you follow him online. You can find him by searching on YouTube for Samuel Earp. You can also find him at his website, probably most important. Go to his website, www.samuelearp.com. 
fineart.com. His last name is spelled E-A-R-P. Now, make sure you go there. Check out his fantastic paintings. He's also on Instagram and Facebook, and make sure you go and follow him. If you enjoyed this conversation, you want to check out what he's doing, go and follow him and support him on Patreon. Would you do that? Now, look, you're going to find all these links to what I'm mentioning in those uh, show notes or the description that goes with this podcast. So make sure you click that little description there when you're scrolling either on your phone or on your computer. Have a look and uh, click on those links and go follow my friend Samuel Earp. And uh, again, it's just such a pleasure to share this conversation with you. Bit of a different conversation here. You might have heard some things here that uh, you weren't used to, or maybe you, you didn't know we were thinking a particular way, but that's all good. Look, we all have got our own unique approaches to things, and I'm still personally trying to figure this whole thing out. What the heck is going on in this world? And again, I think Sam's right. We gotta focus on our purpose and focus on the positive and focus on our creative growth and our journey here and stop focusing on that negative stuff. You know, I, I have the tendency to look down those dark rabbit holes, going places I shouldn't be going, watching too many conspiracy theory videos. You know, I need to get off that stuff and focus on the things that I can control and focus on my creative mission. And that's what 2022 is gonna be all about. So I really hope you'll join me and Sam in this journey and make 2022 the year that we just launch our creative journey. If you're just starting for the first time, you launch, you start that business. If you're wanting to expand and diversify, you look into some of these alternative things that are going on, like crypto, like NFTs, like maybe expanding into video content, expanding on social media, whatever you're doing now, just how can you 10X that? And over these conversations, I hope to be able to share more artists that are doing just that and more strategies that will help you with your creative growth, but also just give you something to focus on that uh, is constructive while you're painting in your studio or sculpting. You might be in sculpture. That's totally cool. Just no abstract, right? Okay, cool. Now I'm looking forward to hanging out with you again very, very soon and bringing another episode to you. It is so good to be back. I've got a few episodes here lined up. So for the next little while, I hope to make it weekly if I can. But uh, if you want to check out and catch up with some stuff that's happening here in my world, in the studio, and uh, have a look at some other things that can push your art even further, then make sure you follow me on Patreon. Of course, you'll see the video version of this podca podcast up on my Patreon page. And again, you're going to get exclusive Q&A videos, critique videos, uh, some time-lapse videos, some things that you're not going to find anywhere else, all on my Patreon page for just five bucks a month. More content than you would even want to watch hours of the stuff, right? I'm putting that much content out every month and there's only one place you can get it and that's my Patreon page. Go to Patreon, search my name, Andrew Tischler. I'm gonna get out of here. I've got some stuff to paint. It has been so awesome hanging out with you here and I look forward to being with you again very soon in another episode of The Creative Endeavor. So long.